Two teams have just been presented to Sven Juran Eriksson, the new national coach of England. He seems to have been in every single match that's been played in England or Wales in the last five weeks. It wouldn't surprise me if he was at the Manchester United Arsenal game about an hour ago. So the balloons go up, and I wonder what else is going to go up here this afternoon in this game between Liverpool and Birmingham, who've already claimed three Premier League scalps on making it to the final. So how are the teams going to line up? Well, let's start by looking at who's in and who's out for Birmingham. Trevor Francis has gone for the Twin Towers in attack. Jeff Horsfield and Deli Adebola. His most difficult decision was on the right, where he's plumped for the trickery of John McCarthy. That means Nicky Eden drops back into the defence, and Jerry Gill, who admitted he'd be suicidal if left out, is indeed admitted, no doubt, to his horror. Yes, and uh, Birmingham will line up in a, a 4 4 2 situation. And I think the reason they've put John McCarthy on that right hand side there is that so that he can supply the crosses along with Stan Lazaridis from the left hand side for the two big men up the front. Because if Liverpool have had a problem over the years, it's been dealing with cross balls with two big strikers against them. As for Liverpool, well, Gerard Houllier has played down his major decision, saying it doesn't matter who pulls on the Liverpool shirt. Well, try telling that to the likes of Michael Owen, Christian Zieger, Gary McAllister, and Nicky Barmby who formed probably the most illustrious substitutes bench in the history of the competition. Igor Bishkan, Steven Gerrard and most notably Robbie Fowler, who captains the side, do start. Well, again, it'll be a tried and trusted 4-4-2 situation and it's great for Robbie Fowler to, uh, to through the problems he's had this year and the injury problems, to be up the front there, really, with Emil Heskey. But the interesting thing is Gerrard and Bishkan in the middle of the field. How will they play? I think that Gerrard will probably play on that right-hand side there and Bishkan will partner her man in the battle that certainly will happen in the midfield against Birmingham. Well, it's uh, a brave man who ever predicts the outcome of a final. Liverpool only have to go back to 1988 in a certain Wimbledon, uh, beating them at Wembley. And, of course, there have been other uh, lower division winners in this competition. Sheffield Wednesday, the last of them, back in 1991. And a certain Ron Atkinson is sitting not far away from us this afternoon. They beat Manchester United there. Can you see an upset, Ray? Well, it's the cup, and that's why there's always a possibility. If you look at the two sides, man for man, then obviously you would say that Liverpool should win this, and if they get a good start, should win it quite comfortably. But Liverpool have had three very, very hard games in this last ten weeks, two games against Roma, one against Manchester City in the FA Cup, and that will have taken a certain something out of them. Uh, Birmingham, although are pushing for promotion, uh, certainly they're not having the pressure of the games that Liverpool have had. So it'll be very interesting to see how Liverpool come off the back of uh, that uh, very, very tough game they had against Roma on Thursday. But he does have wonderful people to bring into the starting lineup for today. There's Deli Adebola, who's been a talisman for Birmingham in the competition this season. Five goals he's scored, including a couple against Tottenham Hotspur. I hate to remind you of that. Yes, certainly, and I was at that game, and uh, he played extremely well. And he is a big, strong, aggressive striker. But he's a, if he has a problem, it's his inconsistency. Is that certainly uh, he has good days and he had bad days. Whereas looking at Emil Heskey there, he's had an absolutely wonderful season. A lot of people doubted whether he could come to Liverpool and perform the way that uh, they like their strikers to play. But I think Gerard Houllier and also Emil Heskey's hard work have done extremely well. And what a day for Robbie Fowler. I think uh, Houllier might well have had it in mind when he left him out of the starting lineup against Roma in midweek that he would play Fowler today and alternate uh, with Michael Owen. 
Well, I think he thinks at the moment Robbie Fowler is virtually back to his best. He had those injury problems, but he's got his fitness levels up. And certainly, uh, I think Gerard there believes that Robbie Fowler, with his extra experience, he is uh, possibly playing slightly better than Michael Owen at the moment. And he gets the nod, and I say, for Robbie Fowler, that is a marvellous boost at the end of what has been uh, quite a difficult year for him. Bonding time for the Reds, the cosmopolitan side full of Germans and Finns and Swiss and Croatians. It's a long uh, far cry from the days where Trevor Francis there actually made his debut in the Football League in Cardiff, though that was at Ninian Park for Birmingham City as a 16-year-old. And uh, he is a fan of the club, he's been a supporter of them since 1969. A nice warm touch there, a handshake from Gerard Ullio. David Ellery, would you, I'm sure you knew this, Ray. This is his 2,327th match, and he's written a book on every single game. I bet you're in a few. Yeah, that's the worrying thing about David Ellery. He did not write books about his matches. Here we go, then, the 2001 Worthington Cup final. Birmingham City and Liverpool, and a fantastic noise generated in this Millennium Stadium, which, for those who don't know it, is right in the heart of the city centre. Birmingham will certainly try and hit the likes of Jeff Horsfield and Deli Adebola with uh, those long balls there. There's Horsfield, who was uh, a brick carrier only uh, a few years ago. This was a little bit of doubt whether he was actually going to play today. There was some talk about a possible hamstring problem, but he's out there and he's very, very important to Birmingham. Right away in this opening few seconds, we've seen how Birmingham are going to try and combat Liverpool. When they get the ball, they're going to get it forward to the big fellas as quickly as they can, and then build from there. We were slightly worried about the playing surface uh, just before the game, because there was a five-a-side game going on, and they were digging it up a bit. Well, they were certainly the top surface was coming off very, very easily, and they were slipping and sliding all over the place. And uh, I think even in this opening couple of minutes, you can see a few imprints of feet out there already. So it is a little bit slippery underfoot, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's March, it's not June, so we've got to expect that, and players should be able to deal with that. Birmingham do have very strong left-sided players, including Stan Lazaridis, Danny Sonner there. Well, the ball going dead, and the goal kick is for Liverpool, who will set a new record if they do win today. To be their sixth success, which would take them ahead of Aston Villa. Sander Vesterville, the Dutchman in goal. Pesky uses his power, he's found Fowler. Must, oh, if he'd have got that ball through, there would have been a chance for Vladimir Smitsa. Poor clearance, straight to Haman. Now Sammy Hoop here, the Finnish international. He's the only man out there who's actually played here before. He was in the Finnish side, which beat Wales. And a certain Yari Lipmanen scored the first ever goal at the Millennium Stadium in a soccer match. Here goes Herman. We remember his goal for Germany at Wembley, sadly. Uh, yes, we certainly do. And uh, but certainly a disappointment, I would think, for Gerald Hulia, that Lipmanen is not actually fit to, to take part either in the team or probably more importantly to be on the substitutes bench because he does give the striking force something different. He comes off into holes and creates problems for defenders playing against him. Yes, I must admit I was looking forward to seeing Lippmann in. Free kick won by John McCarthy. That's a romantic tale in itself. Out with uh, two broken legs in the last two seasons, he's come back just in time. Well, I, I read a few quotes this week from him saying that he was pleased to be back fit and everything. And I don't think deep down he actually expected to be playing here today. It was just marvellous for him to be back in, in the squad. But uh, certainly not only is he back, but he's out there in this marvellous stadium. And uh, obviously he's out there because uh, um, Jamie Carragher is an excellent defender, but he is naturally right-footed, playing out on that left-hand side. And Trevor Francis will think that if they can get the ball to John McCarthy, he could possibly cause... Jamie Carragher a few problems. Granger leaving it for the inspirational O'Connor, the captain of Birmingham City. This is a far cry from Bromsgrove Rovers days. Very much a journeyman professional in his early years, O'Connor, at uh, Bromsgrove, Walsall, Peterborough. There goes Horsfield, strong man. 
Heskey, a little touch, didn't quite find Fowler. Heskey really digging in there. And just told, uh, in a way, I think, to calm it down a touch by referee Ellery, though there's no foul by the England striker. And now it's Lazaridis trying to outstrip Babel. Now, Stan Lazaridis is blessed with electric pace. Well, he is certainly. If Marcus Babel didn't know anything about him before he came onto this pitch, he's found out with that run there that uh, you can see him breathing slightly heavy that uh, Lazaridis is quick, and if you give him space behind and don't get close enough to him to stop him knocking it beyond you, then he will cause you a problem. Stephen Gerrard there, the 20-year-old, very much in Sven Joran Eriksson's plans for England's debut under Eriksson against Spain next week. Danny Sonner there, who helped to put out two of his old clubs on the way here, Sheffield Wednesday and Ipswich Town. Good block on Fowler, but it will spin away to Babel, the German international. He'll roll it encouragingly for Vladimir Smitzer. Took a deflection, but goes straight down the arrow in the end. Result straight to Ian Bennett. Well, I would think that uh, Ian Bennett is quite pleased with that. It's the first thing he's really had to do. It's a massive game for him as well. Been around a long time, but never really played anything like this before. So, for the first shot, uh, not to be the strongest, and also deflected in a relatively easy save to make this first touch. Now, there's a funny one. David Ellery pointed the wrong way for the free kick. He's picking up from that Spanish referee from the middle of the week against Roma. <laughs> no doubt going his book. Gave the free kick to Liverpool, pointed the other way. We do love to talk about referees, don't we? Granger allowing himself to be closed down. Still squeezes away a pass onto the chest of O'Connor. Then Sonner rolling it across for Nicky Eden. Jamie Carragher, though, seems to have been around a long time. He's still only 23, of course. Played in the uh, Youth Cup winning team for Liverpool. Yes, of course, and he's in uh, Sven Eriksson's uh, squad, which, which meets uh, on Monday as well. And uh, the great thing about Jamie is I've known him since a 14-year-old, really. Schmitzer just can't get it through into the path of Heskey. So Heskey bulldozes in on goalkeeper Bennett. And then Hooper with an unchallenged header. And as I was saying there, it, uh, he can play in so many positions, Jamie Carragher, and uh, he's biting to Liverpool because he can play right the way across the back four, and he can fill in the midfield if need be. Michael Johnson, predictably known as Magic, then Granger. Decent angle ball into Horsfield, pushed into the back by Hoopier. Not much doubt about that, I don't think, is a free kick. And O'Connor will roll it wide for Eden. And Liverpool were almost caught unawares there. In fact, Eden has got to the ball first. Now it's McCarthy. Stefan on show away. And uh, Dietmar Haman breaking into the opposition half. Slide rule ball for Heskey, attacking down the left now, Spitzer, Fowler getting into a great position, Robbie Fowler, and he was checked by Granger, it's a corner kick, but a little glancing header from Fowler there might have opened up the score. Well, I think this is a great opportunity, wonderful move, delightful cross here, and Robbie Fowler, for me, loses his marker, really should at least get a header on target there, he just doesn't manage to make contact. Credit Granger, though, he did get a block in, did well to do so. Otherwise, it was 1-0 Liverpool. Son has got it back up towards halfway. In high for Heskey. Oh, and a missed kick by Purse. He certainly not attempting a back pass. Horsfield takes it down very skillfully. He 
may have played at Halifax and Scarborough, but he's come to terms with life at a higher level as Jeff Horsfield in the last couple of seasons. Yes, I think uh, you know playing what was a successful side at Fulham helped his confidence an awful lot, and of course uh, the move here to Birmingham, who are an even bigger club, uh, and playing in a, in a team which is pushing for the Premiership this year. He's had his injury problems, but when he's out there, he is a handful, and uh, certainly Heffier and uh, Hunter know they've been in the game at the end of this 90 minutes. And here goes Horsfield now, pressing it down, but backing in to the defender in the opinion of referee Ellery, the schoolmaster from Harrow. Dishing out a few lessons. There's Horsfield, record signing this season at uh, two and a quarter million pounds. And he paid tribute to the work done on him by Kevin Keegan at Craven Cottage. Westerveld has got one of the longest kicks in English football. Granger's matched him by pumping that. Oh, so what a drop kick attempt by Martin Granger, who's there again now, chipping it down the line for Horsfield. They've been in doubt uh, thanks to a hamstring problem, but wasn't going to miss out today. The Birmingham uh, Raidu, thanks to Trevor Francis, they have a lot of strikers and they can learn a lot from him. And they have a youngster, Andy Johnson, on the bench, who I know has learnt a great deal from Trevor. Well, yes, I, I know Andy Johnson personally myself because he's been in the uh, international setup at the younger age limits, and uh, certainly he is a great talent. And he's, and he's come on quite a number of times in his career all t all already, and certainly he is, uh, you know, he is a good goal scorer and he's good at holding the ball up as well. So uh, I think he has learnt a lot from Trevor and has a great future in the game with him. Spitzer was caught there by Danny Sonnet. No bookings in the game so far. Very physical side, Birmingham, and uh, that's not denigrating them at all. You need to be physical. Fowler, that may be too long. Now, what Liverpool have done in this uh, this opening ten minutes is we expect them to play with a with a flat midfield four with the Smicer on the left hand side of that. But what they've actually done, they've gone in with three there with. Uh, Gerard, her man in the middle, and Bishkan on the left-hand side. And Smeichel has gone in behind the front too because obviously he does have devastating pace, loves to run with the ball, uh, and they think they get uh, him in there in a the little free roll will supply the likes of Fowler and Heskey with good chances. I think it's fair to say that Vladimir Smitzer is enjoying his best run in the side since he came here from Lawns in the French League. Fans didn't uh, take to him immediately, but uh, he's played well in the last couple of months. Well, he has, and he scored some vital goals. And I think one of the problems that he that he had when he came into the, into the English Premiership was dealing with the physical side of it. And I think he's come more to terms with that now. Although that tackle from Danny Summer some minute or so ago will test whether he has come to terms with the physical side or not. Sliced up to halfway by Bennett, and then Connie. Azaridis, space appearing down the left here for Horsfield, Nick through for Adi Bola, and a splendid, unruffled challenge on him by uh, Sammy Hoopier, who pound for pound has got to be one of the best of the continental signings brought to Liverpool Football Club. Well, I think the reason for that is, yes, he's an excellent player and he gives them that uh, bit more strength in the air when defending set plays, but uh, he does things so quietly and efficiently, and uh, well, that's the old Liverpool players. A oh, lovely passing here, and Bishkan plays it too long. And that was a shame because it was a lovely bout of passing. There were four slide rule passes put together there to get Bishkan through on the left. Well, it is, and this is the second time that Liverpool have strung three or four passes together on both occasions. They've created a good opening for themselves. Unfortunately, on the first occasion, Robbie Fowler didn't make uh, good contact. On that occasion, Bishkan's cross in the end was poor because there was three red shirts he could have picked out if his cross had been better. Horsfield will have a free kick. Can't show a little too vigorous for the liking of Mr Ellery. Now, the Birmingham do have an expert in these situations. In that man there, Martin Granger, scored a winning goal recently at Fulham, and that has got them going again in the league. They are actually in fourth position in the first division, but a win at Fulham has 
set them uh, on the right tracks again. Now watch out for Granger's left foot here. Didn't quite get through, but Horsfield was there. Liverpool, admirable defending. Here comes McCarthy to win a corner. The defence is the strong part of Liverpool's side last season. It's not quite been as impressive this season, but they got bodies in when they had to there. Well, it was a great block from Henshaw there. It really was, and he dropped down there, and it was a good strike, but he got his body in the way. And to be fair to Liverpool defensively in this last couple of months, they have been a lot, lot stronger. If you're not six feet tall or over, don't bother going in the six-yard box here, I don't think. Out by Vestal to McCarthy. Lazaridis can nudge it back across. Emil Heskey's back there to serve Liverpool's cause, and there's a break on here. It's three on two. Switzer will play it through, and he'd gone offside of Gerard. That's a real let off for Birmingham. They could so easily have been caught. Well, without a shadow of a doubt, there. I mean, it was a great break from Liverpool from a, you know, from a corner kick situation from Birmingham City. And you can see here now they've got they've really got a two against one situation there. Martin Connor, I think, just tickles the back of Steven Gerrard's legs there and just see him catch. But I don't think it's deliberate. I think he's watching the ball and just runs into the back of Steven Gerrard's heel. But having said that, the linesman on this near side already had his flag up for offside. Correct decision, as we could see from our vantage point. Six floors up here in the uh, Millennium Stadium. a great setting for the FA Cup final later in the year as we said there is only one Wembley and in about four years time we hopefully be commentating from there again but uh, for now Cardiff has opened its doors and welcomed everybody yes it's a marvellous stadium and uh, very well organised here everything uh, is done as well as at Wembley to be fair and uh, you know, it has created a fantastic atmosphere good first time ball from Lazaridis was met by Hoopier O'Connor, you get the feeling that Birmingham are just coming to terms with the afternoon a little. Eden, through for McCarthy, just failed to control it in flight. Eski on the charge. One-on-one -on -one with Johnson. They still shudder, you know, Birmingham City, about memories of Heskey tormenting them for Leicester in a, a cup tie a couple of seasons back. Well, I think in this opening, opening 15 minutes, I think uh, Emil has already shown that he's more than a match for Darren Purst and Michael Johnson, and if they can get the ball into him, into his feet, or even I think he's virtually won every header that's been thrown up to him as well, so he is going to be a major threat to the central two. Liverpool's throw. Purst climb way above Schmitzer. And for the goal kick. Well, I mean, we can see the uh, the incident there with uh, Steven Gerrard, and when the ball's played, he's obviously not in an offside position. But I'm still not too sure that, uh, that as experienced as Martin O'Connor is, I don't think that he meant to trip him there. I think he just stumbled into the back of him conveniently. Carragher for Liverpool. Bishkan there, um, newest signing. From uh, Dinamo Zagreb. The space on the right for Marcus Babel here. He'll be confronted by Granger who slips, allowing uh, Babel to get forward. Well forward, well played Babel. Good challenge on him from Johnson. But with that romping style of his there, Marcus Babel threaded his way into the Birmingham area. It's been a reasonably open match. It has, yes, sir. to be fair, Liverpool will probably have certainly the best football that's been played out there. But of course, Birmingham have shown when they've had a couple of set piece situations that they will be a danger and they'll need to be marked very closely and tightly because there will be a threat at set plays. But certainly, the football has come more from Liverpool as you would expect, and certainly they should settle quicker because they've got more players used to big occasions like this than Birmingham have. Well, I'm just wondering if uh, in the final analysis we might be looking at one of those substitutes on the Liverpool bench to settle it as well. Cross from Babel, fouls in between the two. When you've got the likes of uh, Michael Owen and Nicky Barnby, Christian Zieger and Gary McAllister to call upon, 
it puts uh, Gerard Houllier in the driving seat on the bench, I would suggest. Well, he has got such a marvellous squad now, and uh, you know that's one of the reasons Liverpool have been successful this year. He's got a great squad, he can rotate them. And he's also got a lot of players who can play in different positions as well. Picked up in the air in the general direction of Heskey. Oh, man. Smitzer cannoned away off a Birmingham boot, that belonging to Darren First, corner. When you think, of course, there's uh, no place today either for Yari Lippmann and or Danny Murphy because they're both out injured. That shows you the size and strength of that Liverpool squad. Up comes Hoopier, who's uh, got three goals this season, one of them in an 8 0 win at Stoke in the fourth round of this competition. 8 0, you just don't hear of scores like that nowadays. And I'm told it nearly got to that at Old Trafford today. Corner by Gerard, too close to the uh, Birmingham defender, and so Lazaridis attempts to break. But Birmingham just getting suffocated at the moment. And Bishkan will know there are a lot of red jerseys up uh, in support. O'Connor got away with a rather lazy pass there. Now the big man, Andy Bowler, who had the opportunity to sign for Liverpool as a young man and chose not to do so because he saw the likes of Fowler ahead of him. Horsefield, well read and very calmly dealt with by Didi Haman. A big pitch, and you'd think that would suit Liverpool's passing game. Well, it will do certainly if they can get it going, and they, they have done on two or three occasions. And when they've strung those passes together, they have opened up Birmingham, and, and their movement has caused Birmingham a lot of problems. But uh, you know, Birmingham are not going to make it easy. They're going to try and disrupt Liverpool's passing game by putting them under severe pressure all the time, and that's what they're trying to do in these early stages. Eskey's downward header straight to Johnson. Granger who scored one of the goals in the semi-final triumph against Ipswich. I think many people were stunned by the margin of victory. 4-1. Higgles Horsfield. And uh, he might get the better of on show this time. Decent ball in as well. It's too long for either Andy Bowler or McCarthy. But picked up by Sonner, who is caught by Vladimir Smith. It's a clever play that from Danny Sonner to win the free kick. Yes, it was, because uh, there was no support for him, there was nowhere for him to go, but this is good play. This is Horsfield at his best. Big, strong, caused Henshaw a problem there. Dinked it's the far post, but I don't think John McCarthy is going to win too many balls at that far post there. This, though, is where Birmingham can be at their most menacing, with free kicks around the Liverpool area, with the likes of Adi Bowler, Horsfield, first to aim at. Liverpool need all their six-footers back in from Granger, whipped in! And uh, anywhere will do is the motto for Igor Bishkan. <laughs> Shepherded out by Lazaridis. Now O'Connor. Well, there's no real challenge on Hoop yet, nor again. So, Smitzer now, there is a challenge on him from Eden. Smitzer's ball was directly to Martin O'Connor, and Andy Bowl is trying to make space up ahead for Lazaridis, who plays for the body check and gets the free kick out of Marcus Babel. I think it was six or one and half dozen of the other there that certainly uh, I think Lazaridis saw that he had a chance of getting a free kick but Marcus Babel as well was very very aware of Lazaridis pace and really just put his arm across the front of him and stop him from getting momentum. Horsfield looking to turn Babel crashes it straight against the German's right knee
Robbie Fowler's got an amazing goal-scoring record in this competition. 26 goals in 31 appearances. So that's why Ulier there plumped for him. It's not like Phil Thompson chattering all the way through the match. Well, Robbie stood up shouting. <laughs> shouting. I was just thinking you mentioned the Stoke game, the 8-0 game before, and that really started Robbie Fowler's year for him. I think he scored three or four goals in that match. He got three, yeah. Uh, his second hat-trick in the competition. He once got five against Fulham. Now, the Australian, Lazaridis, and I'm sure a lot of people down under uh, will be uh, following the events of this afternoon with interest. Easy for Hama. And his range of passing allows him to find Heskey. Ten blue shirts behind the ball. Well, the hallmark of Liverpool's game over the years has always been their patience. Pass the ball around, probe, wait for the opening to appear. Nothing hurried at the moment. Odds on favourites to win, of course, today. In the bookmaker's eyes. Bit of whistling around the Millennium Stadium. No doubt it's all coming from Birmingham fans. Well, I think you know Birmingham have said to uh, said to Liverpool, if you have good possession in your half of the field. We're not going to try and win it there unless we're there in numbers, and we're just going to let you have it. And they've dropped off into their own half of the field and say, right, now try and play through as if you can. And he's just through towards Gerard. Oh, he's caught here. This might just be the first bucket. Darren Purse across, now referee Ellery contents himself by awarding the free kick against the tall Birmingham central defender. Exquisite first touch from Steven Gerrard. Yes, again, you know, he may be playing on the right-hand side of midfield, but he can pop up anywhere, and he's popped up twice now on that left-hand side, uh, breaking from the middle of the field, and of course has the ability to go beyond people as well, has that pace to knock it past and get the other side of defenders. Liverpool have summoned six players to be in the penalty area for this. Real traffic jam in there, but it's come back for Smitsa to try again. Around McCarthy he goes, left-footed it comes in, blocked by Horsfield. And Lazaridis is a one-man band here in blue. Four shirts around him, all the red. And Lazaridis has done superbly well. In fact, he's still got the possession, but then he played it into... Paddy Bowler, who was offside, but had the sense to come back. McCarthy carried on going, he was onside. Yes, I think uh, McCarthy had realised that, the, that uh, the ball was sort of was meant for him and not for Paddy Bowler. He would actually got to that ball, but he hesitated as Paddy Bowler used his head and, and just ran back into an onside position. O'Connor. Again, O'Connor. And Granger. Liverpool, of course, are still in four competitions. They're certainly not going to win the Premier League, but they could win the UEFA Cup, they could win the FA Cup. And obviously, they could win this one, which uh, guarantees a passport to next season's UEFA Cup. And even if Liverpool end in a Champions League position, there goes McCarthy, and it breaks to Adi Bola. I'm just going to say that uh, if Liverpool get a Champions League spot, then Birmingham City would go into the UEFA Cup next season. If they were to get beaten today. A very tantalising prospect for them. Show very calm overcomes uh, Nicky Eden. Lazaridis might catch Liverpool out here. First was flying in for that one and it just eluded him. So, Horsefield's onside. Lazaridis chance to nudge it across again. Good block by Babel. Granger, 
Danny Bowler was there, terrific punch by Vesterville. Here's McCarthy, and John McCarthy drives it straight at the goalkeeper. Good opening. Well, it was, but it was a really intelligent header from Danny Summer when the ball came out. Not the best punch in the world, but that's an intelligent header from Summer. Creates the opportunity for John McCarthy, but uh, didn't maybe strike it as hard as he would like. And it, not only was Vesterveld there, but there were two players on the line behind as well, so um, it wasn't as dangerous as it looked when the ball actually dropped to McCarthy. Still Birmingham City nil, Liverpool nil. Nineteen sixty-three, when Birmingham competed in uh, the League Cup final for the first time. Here goes Fowler now, it's nicked in. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Robbie Fowler's back, and he loves this competition. It's his twenty-seventh goal in football League Cup matches, and what a time to get it! The first one in a major final at the Millennium. Wouldn't you put your money on Robbie Fowler? Well, again, it was Emil Heskey dominating the aerial battle. The ball's knocked down, little flick from Emil Heskey. Well, that is a fantastic finish there. Dipping volley on his favourite left foot. Bennett just slightly off his line there, leaving the space behind. And it really is a tremendous strike. And where did Robbie Fowler go when he scored the goal? He went straight to his big mate, Jamie Redknapp, who's had such a poor time with injuries. And I know how much Robbie thinks about Jamie's predicament at the moment. Birmingham are in trouble now, they're on the back foot. Here goes Heskey for Liverpool. That's ignited the match without question. Just what Birmingham couldn't afford. Gerard keeps them coming forward in tandem now with Babel. Really important now for Birmingham not to lose their composure and get rattled. Well, that's right, they need to get possession of the ball and try and calm it down because Liverpool are in full flow at the moment. Fowler again! And the block this time by Purse. Liverpool indeed in full flow, and how Gerard Houllier must be reflecting on the right choice of striker. Well, you know, Gerard is obviously it's wonderful the selection of strikers he's got, but uh, you know, having read between the lines within this last couple of weeks, I think he really does think that Robbie, as much as anybody, is the one who is really in goal scoring form, and that really was a strike of a man full of confidence. his 10th goal of the season but six of them have come in this competition he really is following in the footsteps of Ian Rush who had such a wonderful goal scoring record in cups well, I've always said that Robbie Fowler is perhaps the most natural finisher in the English game and he certainly proved it with that instinctive effort well, it was, because when Emil Heskey flicked it on, he still had a lot to do, it was bouncing in front of him, OK, it was on his favourite left foot, but he was still some 23 yards out, something like that, and he, and he just looked up, and whether he saw Bennett off his line or not... Here comes Sonner for Birmingham, sorry to break in, Ray, but there is a problem here for Liverpool, and Lazaridis plays it too close to Sander Westerveld, McCarthy's gone in, very sharply on the Dutch keeper, He's big enough to look after himself. Well, I'm just thinking, I don't think he can be hurt that way. I mean, John McCarthy is not the biggest in the world. Yes, here we see it. There's a shoulder charge there. I mean, that shouldn't be hurting somebody. That annoys me with goalkeepers. <laughs> it doesn't happen very often with goalkeepers, but, you know, best of hell there. It's, he's gone down like somebody shot him. It really was a nothing challenge. That wouldn't have cut a fairy cake in half, would it? He wouldn't have survived in the 70s, that's a certainty. <laughs> You'd have been embarrassed to go down with that. Now there's Ian Bennett there, and I just wonder, as I was saying before, they had that attack Birmingham, whether Robbie saw Ian Bennett just slightly off his line, because once that dipping volley started, there was no way that Bennett was going to get back to actually get his hand to it. And Bennett, too, is uh, Barry Fry's first signing for Birmingham City. Barry Fry, the last manager of the club before Trevor Francis. Esky played his part in the goal. It's uh, just a year, of course, since he moved. He left within about three days of last year's final, in which he played a winning part for Leicester City against Tranmere Rovers. And this, amazingly, Esky's fourth Worthington Cup final. Here's Fowler jumping again into the area, and a corner kick, no goal kick. Well, uh, 
Again, Robbie did extremely well there, totally off balance, and yet he still had the foresight to see. You'll see Gerard come into the picture in a minute, and he just tries to he tries the overhead to start off with, and then there's Gerard, and he's uh, I'm not sure if he's trying to shoot or whether he's actually trying to put it through to Gerard, but obviously so full of confidence. Darren Purse there was a little bit physical when he's challenged with the uh, Fowler. Well, this is a big test for Darren Purse as well, because uh, certainly when he was a lot younger, there was an awful lot talked about him that uh, he could go on and be an England centre-half. And uh, yes, he's now been successful at Birmingham, and these are the sort of games that he needs to do well in if he's going to play higher. And I'm afraid it was his ball there which was um, a giveaway to Gerrard. Long from Granger, up in the air from Hoopier. Out here is Horsfield. Birmingham trying to rally. Lazaridis could be a key man for them. With the right foot, doesn't get it beyond Hamad. Again, Lazaridis, corner. Spirited comeback from uh, the Birmingham side, and it has to be. It's that man, Lazaridis, who's the one who's causing the problems. He's the one on the left-hand side who's getting those crosses into the box. We haven't seen anything from McCarthy in terms of uh, dangerous crosses in, but... Every time Lazaridis has got it down his left-hand side, he's caused a slight problem. Looks great, the stadium, doesn't it? it uh, certainly generating a marvellous atmosphere here for this first Worthington Cup final to be played outside Wembley since the early days of the competition where it's played home and away. The grounds of the two competing clubs. Eden's corner for Barnsley, Westerville's got to get there, pours it down. He's had a good run recently, 12 clean sheets in the last 19 matches. There have been one or two questions prior to that about him. Yeah, I don't think there's been any questions about um, his shot stopping, and certainly his distribution. He's probably the best kicker of the ball uh, along with Bartes in the Premiership. But I think where one or two questions have been asked is where he has to deal with cross-ball situations when he's under pressure. Uh, and we've already seen in this uh, opening 35 minutes that there have been a couple of balls but he actually hasn't made a clean catch with or hasn't made a good punch with. Much to ponder for Gerard Ullier, but they're in the box seat, his side. He spent £63 million pounds since he took over from Roy Evans. It's over the top, but it's a free kick. I think the feeling about Gerard Ullier is that in the last few weeks there really have been signs of the old Liverpool and that they're really getting it right again. Well, the old Liverpool were all about consistency, that was, that was the uh, the key word to it. They would, they would get results week in, week out. And until this last couple of months, Liverpool have been doing well, but then giving away uh, silly goals and games they should have got something out of, they finished up getting beaten. In. But I say this last couple of months, all of a sudden, that consistency seems to be coming. Heskey will take it, there are four blue shirts around him. He's got great power though, Heskey. On he goes. Johnson stuck with him. Yes, Johnson did well there, forced him out to the right-hand side because all the red players were on the left-hand side. If he could have turned out and gone left, then there was a great opening for Liverpool. Stephen Arnshaw, the Swiss international. Across the hoop here of Finland. Go all the way through, Fowler's coming, and fortunately Bennett was for Birmingham too. That's good goalkeeping, that required expert anticipation. Well, it is, because uh, I think Robbie Fowler certainly would have nicked in front of Darren Purse there if Bennett had not been as quick as he was. This is Fowler now, wrestling with Lazaridis, who wins. Nowhere to go, and as a result, possession forfeited immediately. Liverpool lost to Roma on uh, Thursday, although they went through, of course. It was their first defeat in ten matches, which uh, just shows that sort of consistency that Ray Clements was talking about there, that is demanded at Anfield. Poor ball out of defence this time, though. Nowhere to go. 
Granger has to hit it long eventually, and there's a free kick awarded for offside. That is the problem Birmingham seem to have at the moment, though, getting decent balls into Andy Bowler and Horsfield. Well, because the midfield is so tied up with trying to get the ball off Liverpool in advanced positions that when they do get the ball, they don't have such a long distance to play the ball, they can't then get support. And uh, Sven looks a little bit cold there, but I'm sure he's seen enough things to uh, to warm him up. Certainly, uh, Robbie Fowler's performance so far, and Emil Heskey as well. McCarthy, Barney Bowler, right. corkscrewed on the header and lifted it back. Yeah, I was talking about how many matches David Ellery has officiated in. I'd like to know how many matches Sven Joran has seen. He did look a bit cold there, but I think he's he's won the hearts of a lot of people simply by the fact he has been going around the country and watching as many matches as possible. Well, certainly nobody could say that he's uh, he's not working hard at it. He says he's, uh, he's certainly never ever in the office and uh, he's out watching games every single minute that he possibly can to get to know as much as he possibly can about uh, the Premiership football and English players in the Premiership. Liverpool are leading Birmingham by a goal to nil. Robbie Fowler in this Worthington Cup final in the Millennium Stadium. This time uh, Michael Johnson does cover Fowler. And then he's asked by Granger to get it up to the halfway line. Andy Bowler using his height, but he's up against another big fellow in Babel. Eskew with a layoff. Fowler, he was swinging that left leg. He's so confident he was willing to have a go even there. Now it's Gerrard. Spins off Granger. Gerard, of course, doubtful with a groin injury in the build-up to this game. It's a big disappointment for someone like Danny Murphy, who's scored seven goals in two seasons in the Worthington Cup, but he's not fit to play today. Nobody likes missing major matches. Babbles throw. On it goes. And, uh, ooh, now that would be three points at the old arms part. Well, let's be kind and say it took a wicked deflection, shall we? Certainly the one thing Birmingham can't afford is to go two down at any stage of this match, not just now. No, no, I mean, if they, if they were to lose a second goal, um, they, had a, they had a massive task before the game started. It's now a mountain. If the second one goes in, I'm not too sure they've got anywhere near it. And Liverpool wants some silverware. Only one trophy in nine years, and that was this one. You and I were present, Ray, when Liverpool beat Bolton. Referee says play on here. Smitzer does go on. Birmingham might well have been caught there, but they've massed the ranks to get the ball away. Interesting decision by referee Ellery, no free kick given. Yes, Liverpool beat Bolton Wanderers 2-1 with a couple of goals from Steve McManaman in 1995, and that's their only success really in nine years. Free kick Birmingham, taken by Sonner. Down the line, McCarthy. He's been largely stifled. And there, uh, he's got a good ball in here. The Lazaridis with the back heel. Nearly got Danny Sonner in. Well read by Sammy Hoopia. Well, that really was a delightful ball. I mean, that's, uh, that was a good ball in from McCarthy in the first place. And Trevor Francis will be pleased that they've tried to create something in open play in terms of not just lumping balls into the into the penalty area and trying to get headers onto the target. But that was a patient move, good pass into the box, and a delightful touch from Stan Lazaridis. It just failed to get to Danny Summer. I'm sure. In for Heskey, he's got to Switzer in, could be two! The wrong side of the net, and Vladimir Smitzer holds his head in his hands. Well, that could have been game set and match. Well, he knows that he should have scored from that. To be fair to Ian Bennett, he came at uh, Smitzer very, very quickly, but again, it's Heskey's power in the air. Little flick, Smitzer gets the other side, but really, somebody of his ability really should have scored with that because he's, he's, got, he's got no real pressure from behind. Bennett's done the best he possibly can, but just after it knocks it, what, a foot wide? 
Yeah, Bennett's heart would have been in his mouth there for sure. He's done well here, Horsfield, to batter his way through the challenge of Stefan Hornshow. And Birmingham have a throw. Keep right on to the end of the road is the anthem. Just going to be a minute of time added. In an interesting and at times exciting half. Liverpool forward once again now with Steven Gerrard. They're queuing up across the goal mouth area. Oh, and Ian Bennett was almost put off by first. Well, I think there's good communication there from Bennett because, again, that was that horrible ball that defenders don't like dealing with. Delivered in by Steven Gerrard. Uh, and there were red shirts coming in, but uh, Bennett, obviously, good communication, and uh, Perth just about managed to get out of the way of it. Certainly been a good half for Liverpool. They badly want a, another trophy to put in the cabinet after the lean years. Some people denigrate the competition. Uh, some would say they'd rather win the UEFA Cup, certainly they'd rather win the Premier League with the FA Cup, but... Once you've got a trophy, that's all that matters. Well, it is, and, uh, you know, if you were to anybody that was sat inside this stadium and see the commitment of both teams and the fervour of both sets of fans, know that this is a something cup. Good headed from Adibola, hooked out, had to be hooked out as well uh, by Hoopia. inroads on a regular basis finds it down the line for Horsfield no danger from that referee Ellery consults his watch I think an overall impression Ray uh, tempting Providence but it's been the most enjoyable final we've seen for a few years well it has, it's been some good football and it's gone the way we expected it you know, Liverpool have played some excellent football uh, Birmingham have battled hard tried to close Liverpool down and of course, one or two. Adibola! Held up. Little uh, bits of trouble like we just saw there. But uh, nothing that has really caused major embarrassment to Liverpool. And I think uh, it's only 1 0 to Liverpool, but it's uh, a comfortable 1 0, let's put it like that. It had to be Robbie Fowler, didn't it? He's got the one goal in this game. As uh, we look here, how Heskey flicked it on, and a superb effort that from Robbie Fowler who just loves scoring goals in the Worthington Cup, and he's got the one that separates the teams at half-time here in the Millennium Stadium. The whole of the second half to come, but at half-time it's Liverpool 1, Birmingham City 0. Welcome back to the superb Millennium Stadium in Cardiff, the final of the Worthington Cup, in which Liverpool of the Premier League are leading Birmingham City of the Nationwide League by a goal to nil and Ray Clemens significant moment this in the career of young 20 year old Andy Johnson who comes on for the second half as substitute for Deli Adebola well yes we mentioned him in commentary there in the first half he has got a tremendous future uh, he is a goal scorer and of course in that first half Birmingham have not been able to create too many goal scoring opportunities and the, the partnership of Jeff Horsfield and Deli Adebola has not really worked out in that first half. So Andy Johnson is a far more mobile, uh, quicker player and he will try and get around Jeff Horsfield who to be fair to him in the first half has held this up quite well but there's been nothing else apart from that. We're underway again then. This, by the way, the 53rd League Cup final. And Birmingham attack with that man, Horsfield, straight at the restart. Sonner, wide McCarthy, good cross river ball, John McCarthy, as he always was in his days with the York and Port Vale. Not had much chance to get telling balls in today, though. He's now partnered by Eden down the right. That is a good ball! And Johnson might well have marked his appearance with a goal inside a minute. Terrific ball from Nicky Eden. Well, it was a wonderful play out on this right-hand side. They were so patient until the ball eventually came to Nicky Eden. And that is a great opportunity. Although, to be fair, I think it was Henshaw there who actually 
got uh, half a block in. That's that was Hippier actually, who actually got half a block in. But really, Johnson will be disappointed that he hasn't hit the target there and probably can't believe his luck that he's got a chance, what, seconds into his appearance. As simple as that. Maybe it did come too soon for him. Trevor Francis is a striker who would know. Well, that would have been the most dramatic substitution probably of all time in the Worthington Cup final. By the way, just to remind you of the rules of the competition, that we do get a winner today, no matter what happens. If the scores are level after 90 minutes, it's extra time, no golden goals. So if the scores are still level after extra time, it's a penalty shootout. And Birmingham, I know, in preparation for their semi-final with Ipswich, practised the day before and scored 10 out of 10. But it's always different on the day, somehow. Well, you can never recreate an atmosphere like you've got inside this stadium on the training ground. Maybe it gives players a little bit of confidence. I'm not totally sure about that because uh, certainly the pressure from the fans inside the occasion and everything else uh, makes the, the penalty taking so, so much different. And, uh, Wicked Wanderers did pretty well with it against Wimbledon uh, last week in that amazing FA Cup tie. People in this country still love cup competitions. No question about that. Herod into the pass, Haman, but he's still managed to release Gerard. Still going, Stephen Gerard. You get the way he's feeling his way back uh, after his injury. Here goes Heskey. Not sure that Gerard will last 90 minutes. No, he never ceases to amaze me, Stephen, because you know he doesn't play for three or four games. I think it's at least four games he's missed for Liverpool, but he comes in and immediately it's like he's been playing every week. He never seems to lack that fitness. Fowler. Obviously the problem with him is he plays one game and then there seems to be a reaction a lot of times and finds it very difficult at the moment to be playing two games in a week. Still a very young man, of course. We never used to hear about things like shin splints, but we do now. Down the right goes Babel. A man who has played in a European Cup final. And Babel's here into the area. Two. Fowler. Great block by Purse. And uh, Robbie Fowler was on the threshold of a second goal there. Excellent play from Marcus Babel. But it was a tremendous ball through to him in the first place. It was threaded through the eye of a needle. And also, all of a sudden, Babel's got all the time in the world. And I actually thought he was going to have a shot. But uh, felt that Robbie was the better option, uh, albeit on his right foot. Birmingham is still alive, thanks to that block by Darren Purse, but they're having to do a lot of defending at the moment. Heskey will take the battle to them again, and uh, this time the block is by Johnson. Birmingham living dangerously there for a moment or two. And Lazaridis, is that lovely running style of his, covers acres, doesn't he? But then runs out of them. Broken up by Haman. They're gathering the clans again here now. This is Schmitzer and then Heskey, and it clipped the back of Heskey's heel. Birmingham looking decidedly vulnerable. Well, Heskey just got his feet tangled up there, what he was trying to do. Lovely ball from Schmitzer, he was just trying to take it with his left foot onto his right to smash it in the net. and got it caught between the two feet and tripped over it, basically. But uh, it's a little worrying, uh, although... Birmingham had their best opportunity in this opening few minutes of the second half. It's a little worrying how Liverpool have hit back and opened up uh, Birmingham a couple of times so easily. It's good for the game, though. It's lively, it's open, it's entertaining. Everything you want in a cup final. Just one other observation, Ray. David Ellery, uh, to be fair to him, he, they've made it very easy, I think, his job for him today. You've hardly noticed him. Well, that's right, yeah, he must have got out of bed the right side as well today because there have been a couple of occasions when he could have possibly booked people and he hasn't, and that's been good. Well, I've no doubt you can hear them singing. Wales has always been reputed, of course, for having good singers down in the valleys, but... Uh, most of the people here today have come from England, uh, but uh, they make a good Welsh male voice choir. Well, the Birmingham fans are doing everything they possibly can to lift their team, and although they're being outplayed for most of the game, it's still only 1-0, and when it is only that score, they've still got a chance. 
Eden, who was playing for Barnsley last season. In fact, he helped to knock Birmingham City out of the playoffs. Burnley, uh, Barnsley reaching that final before losing to Ipswich. Here's Johnson, down, uh, he nearly went down, but it's a corner and not a penalty. They did well not to bring him down, actually, there. Well, they do, but I think the first con the initial contact was possibly just outside the penalty area, um, and then he stumbled through, and Carragher just about got in front of him and knocked it out for the corner. Granger's corner, then, for Birmingham, seeking an equaliser. To drift in towards Westerveld, and the whistle goes. I did have a problem here uh, earlier today, by the way. It's not raining, thankfully. In fact, it's been a beautiful weekend down in uh, South Wales. But uh, they couldn't get the roof to open. It had to be done manually. It had actually frozen. That's how cold it was here last night. Yes, it certainly was. And we had the snow last night as well. But, of course, the, the cover was shut here last night. But uh, there was a slight embarrassment the, uh, this morning when the electrical side of it, it wouldn't work. So um, we had two people winding it back. I know you had a nice quiet night in, in the warmth. Anyway, here goes Fowler. Gerard. Chances still for Liverpool. Fowler! It was a lovely turn again. That's where he's so, so sharp. Well, he is, because when the, that ball was driven over there, he shaped as though he's going to let it through his legs then. A wonderful touch with the outside of his left foot. And make good contact with the right, but Bennett has that side covered. He's got to drag it across that far far stick to actually try and beat the keeper there but, uh, but the touch and the turn was excellent Will Robbie Fowler be stepping up to receive the trophy later this afternoon, he's the captain of uh, Liverpool today the last Birmingham City captain to uh, step up uh, was Trevor Smith back in 1963 that's long before your time Ray, not mine I, I remember it. I don't remember it. I'm not admitting to it. I do. And the Birmingham hero was one Ken Leak. I'm told he's here today. He scored a couple of goals. There he is. Tomo's on his feet. I knew he couldn't sit down for long. And that's Gary McAllister zipping up the tracksuit at the back. He's never ever played on a winning side in any cup final. Best they don't bring him on then. <laughs> 36 years of age now, McAllister. Johnson, space along the right, but Johnson prefers to go it alone for the moment, still digging in and brought down, free kick against Babel. The one thing he's got, of course, Danny Johnson, is pace, uh, with uh, all due respect to Adi Bowler, he hasn't. Well, Johnson's got pace and he, and he loves running at people and upsetting people. You know, he'd lost that ball there, but he kept going, won it back and finished up getting his team uh, a free kick in a position that Martin Granger will quite fancy, I would think. 28 yards out, I would think. Danny Son is also placing the ball there. So is uh, Nicky Eden. So Eden will float it. And uh, almost confusion between Hoopier and Vesterveld. Igor Bishkan. Calm as you like around McCarthy, like on a Sunday afternoon stroll. And then he goes and plays it straight out. Well, yet again, we saw that sometimes there's indecision still in that Liverpool defence. It's a basic ball which I'd, the keeper's going to take or the centre-half. There's that lack of communication and uh, it was nearly an embarrassment, but thankfully uh, Hippier then managed to clear it. But certainly there's a little problem here because Bishkan certainly put his arm up around shoulder level and caught Danny Sommer in the neck with his elbow, I think. But I don't think he slashed out but certainly he lifted his arm. First examination for the schoolmaster. And uh, Bishkin, I saw a couple of months ago, get sent off against Rotherham United. Son has always been a little bit temperamental. I don't know how good his Croatian is. I think what Ellery is actually saying, now just watch his left arm come up there, and he did catch him in the throat. And, uh, you know, it wasn't very pretty, to be fair, but I'm not sure that's the right reaction you want from uh, from the player. But I think, to be fair to the referee, he's actually said that, uh, hey, this is a good game of football. There's no need for any nastiness and silliness. Both teams are having a go at it fairly and squarely, and let's uh, forget about the incident. And they did shake hands afterwards. Goal kick Birmingham. 
So Robbie Fowler there with his 27th goal in only his 32nd match in League Cup uh, matches under the various guises. Let's put his side ahead of Trevor Francis's. Trevor, of course, was manager of Sheffield Wednesday when they lost both the FA Cup final and the League Cup final in the same season eight years ago, both against the same opposition, Arsenal. Trevor was also a substitute, by the way, when Sheffield Wednesday beat Ron Atkinson's Man United without getting on the field. Still happier memories. There goes Bishkan now. Laid off by Fowler for Haman. I was just thinking there, Arsenal must wish they were here today after the result they've had earlier on today. Heskey, one-on-one -on -one with Purse. You feel the toying with Birmingham a little bit. Carragher can join in. Switching for Bishkan. Rolled in here. Smiths are on side. Liverpool might get a second. Bumped over and wide by Heskey. What a golden opportunity. But the referee's given a corner, so... Well, the Birmingham players are surrounding Mr Ellery. Maybe it should have been a goal kick. Well, when this ball is played, that Birmingham were trying to play offside, but certainly Darren Purse was in behind all of them, playing there, Smicer on there, and certainly you can see Darren Purse over that far side playing them on. And when the ball's played in, you think, yes, that's going to be two, but somehow it's gone over the top. Well, they did criticise Amil Heskey for his lack of productivity in terms of goals. Until this season, he's got 18. Although, strangely, he's not scored in the League Cup this season, not in the Worthington Cup, he's got a couple in the FA Cup. Smitzer, key player for Liverpool, takes up these good positions, takes the corners as well. As of now, up goes Hoopier, up also goes Bennington, he can use his hands. intervention from Ancho. As long as the margin stays at one, Birmingham are in the game. Ancho's had a stout game. He has, yes. He started off, I thought, probably not as confident as I'd like to see him. Eden's cross, flick through! Just eludes Lazaridis. Horsfield got a touch on it. Lazaridis was marauding in there. A touch from his boot and it might have been one apiece. Yes, and Vestavel's saying there, uh, hey, we've got to stop these crosses coming into the box, which is, uh, which is why, Liverpool, uh, why Liverpool have not been under too much pressure in that first half, because they managed to stop the crosses at source. All of a sudden, they stepped off the wide man there, the ball came in, and we've seen what happens when they get balls in. Nicky Eden's got one in in the first minute, and they maybe should have done better, and there we've seen half a chance for Jeff Horsfield as well. And there have been two great crosses from Nicky Eden. Fowler's ball through, problem, Smitzer, wonderful save by Ian Bennett. And uh, for all the world, you imagined there that Liverpool were going to get their second through Vladimir Smitzer. Well, I can't believe it's still 1-0 with the number of chances that there have been created, especially in this second half. Could have been three apiece. Well, it could have been, yes. Uh, certainly, you know, Birmingham have had a couple of chances, but this, yet again, straightforward flick on, Little dink over the top, and the back four of Birmingham just can't handle the pace of the front players of Liverpool. Smyser starts a good half a yard behind Purse there, but gets in front of him, and Bennett makes an excellent save. He stands up, big as he possibly can, and made it difficult for Smitzer to actually put that beyond him. He's had two great chances, Smitzer, in this match. A man who's played in the French Cup final for Lourdes. And a huge smile on the face of Hoopier. Somebody's enjoying it anyway. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. We, go. we all are. Babel smacks the free kick up onto the head of Heskey. This time the liaison with Fowler is unproductive. Eden, the man I was saying, has just played two golden crosses in, in this half for Birmingham, but that's onto the head of Upia. O'Connor, first time I've noticed him in this half. The biggest day of his career without question. And Horsfield's here. And he winning promotion from the conference with Halifax Town was a big day for him. 
Yes, and if it doesn't uh, go right today, they've got many big matches in front of them because getting into the Premiership will equal this, this game today, I'm sure. The cross from Lazarinis, and it was a real teaser. A curler, a teaser, went over the top of Westerveld, and he needed Carragher there. Well, it's a great cross. He's dug this out from nowhere at the far post there. Westerveld certainly could not be expecting to get it to the far post from there, and uh, luckily Jamie Carragher was uh, aware of the danger. Well, I do hope we get some more goals because it's a final that deserves them. From both sides of the way they're playing now. Cut and thrust. Granger corner for Birmingham City. Got to keep it away from Westerveld. Does so. There went Sonner. Lazaridis has won another one. And listen at the Birmingham fans now who are behind the goal that their team is attacking. And they're attacking it with some gusto. And they've certainly perked up since Andy Johnson arrived. Well, actually cleared off the line by Haman. I don't know whether that was going to sneak in. And it was certainly one that couldn't be left. Connor up towards Horsfield. Then Sonner, decent little header. Purse has stayed up there. Free kick. This definitely Martin Granger territory. Well, Martin Granger, I think, is the third top goal scorer, I think, for Birmingham. And uh, you know, that just shows how dangerous he is in these situations. Again, no doubt, was a free kick. Well, you could sense the atmosphere around this occasion now. It's uh, tumultuous is the noise in this Millennium Stadium, and the place will erupt at this end of the ground if Birmingham draw level. Eden, Granger and Lazaridis are all here. My money would be on Granger. Every red shirt behind the ball, as you would expect. McCarthy tracks across the front of that line. It's up from McCarthy. Uh, from uh, Granger, rather. A Liverpool survivor skirmish. This is Birmingham's best spell. It is, yes. It was well struck by Granger there, but uh, the wall only stood... Uh, strong, it stood tall as well, and I think it was probably Stephen Gerrard actually hit around the head. Well, Liverpool under pressure for virtually the first time in the game for a concerted spell. And yet they've had some great openings in this half, and Smitzer now might get away from Lazaridis and gets a free kick out of the Australian. Lazaridis, for whom the highlight of last year was playing in the Olympic Games, played for Australia's team as an overage member in Sydney. The next goal is ultimately going to be crucial. If Liverpool gets it, I don't think there'll be any way back for Birmingham, but if Birmingham could get a toehold in this match, what a finish we would have. Well, very much so, yes, but uh, you know, Liverpool, they've proved this last few weeks, they can take pressure and break from that pressure. Bishkan has got past McCarthy. Angles it crossfield for the Marcus Babel to join in. And then the high ball is looped up here, Bennett's got to get to this. He does so, it might drop for Haman. He'll loop it in, here comes Fowler! And he didn't get a touch, neither did Bennett. And another heart-stopping moment if you're a blue nose. Well, certainly, Bennett gets a good fist on this, but her man knows exactly what he's doing. He knows that Bennett's not in the right position, dinks it in there, and Fowler, I think, just takes his eye off the ball and sees Bennett coming, and therefore doesn't make a good enough contact with it to actually stick it in the net. As a member of the union, you'd say that was good goalkeeping. Well, yes, you certainly make yourself big and as strong as you can, and... Uh, Try and influence the uh, attacking players if you possibly can. Gerard Houllier knows that this is a key phase of the game. His side needs that breathing space of a second goal. And all credit for Birmingham for carrying the fight. They've got to do, of course. And, in fact, Liverpool's last two Cup final victories have been against sides from lower divisions, Bolton Wanderers and uh, in this competition and Sunderland in the FA Cup. Foul. few who's around the ground, that was never going to count. <laughs> Martin O'Connor's enjoying it. Big day out for him. Mr Motivator, they call uh, O'Connor. Oh, 
there was a time, of course, when Birmingham were playing in finals quite regularly. They played in two FA Cup finals and two Intercity's first Cup finals, and they've got a free kick here. Very noticeable that Perth is staying up more and more. Here is McCarthy's ball across, Babbles header out. And all of a sudden, it's Liverpool who are having to pull everybody behind the ball. Yes, and uh, Robbie Fowler there as uh, as the ball was played out, he's shouting to his teammates to get up behind him. Don't let's sit back on the edge of the box and invite Birmingham pressure. Didn't quite get through to Horsfield, but it has got through to Smitzer. His options are both right and left. He went left towards Fowler, and the interception was made. McCarthy can't get in behind Carragher as Ray Clemens said Carragher basically is a right footed player playing at left back but he's done uh, such a sterling job there he's a fixture in the side well he's such a tenacious character he's, you know, he's a scouser, he loves the club and, and very very rarely does he let the club down wherever he's having to play the danger for Birmingham is that they're going to overcommit themselves and going to get caught on a break from Liverpool. Well, certainly we saw a situation just literally 30 seconds ago there where Liverpool broke and Smeichel all of a sudden was the wrong side of Martin O'Connor and they had a really good attacking options both sides of him. Unfortunately, his pass wasn't a good one, but uh, certainly he had lots of space to run at the back, back four of Birmingham and could have caused embarrassment to them if he picked out the right pass. I think Yari Lippmann might have had a field day today. But uh, he's not out there. And, uh, in fact, no substitutions made by Liverpool as yet. And that's a, a great card for Gerard Houllier to have up his sleeve, knowing he could bring on Owen with his pace, or McAllister with his passing skills, Barnby with his general awareness. Wonderful options for Houllier. Fowler wins the ball. Eskis on a charge through the middle, but it's won back by Lazaridis. It's exciting because you simply don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah, I just I just wonder is that with Smeitzer that uh, Gerald Houllier just might be getting a little bit frustrated with him. He's getting in good positions, but wants to dwell too much on the ball and also his passing is not as crisp as it certainly was in the first half and uh, you know, I think he would be looking at the situation in the next five or ten minutes that uh, he needs to book up Smites or maybe that might be one of the changes Horsfield's got another battle on his hands here with uh, Stefan Anshow Birmingham have certainly won more free kicks in this half in the opposition territory here goes Lazaridis, always a danger It'll be a corner kick. Hard man to mark, easy to bring down. Well, certainly anybody that's got pace running at you and can go both sides of you is, is always a problem and can cause an embarrassment to any player. The movement on the bench uh, suggests that Brian Hughes may appear shortly for Birmingham City as Eden whips across onto the head of Babel. Oh, Granger was swinging the left boot and it was taken away from him by his own man. Oh, and a slip here, as Fowler got the pace to get on here, it's a long, long way to go. He'll have support coming up on his outside from Bishkan. He's played in his Bishkan by Fowler, they've had to hold it up. O'Connor's got back, the chance may have gone, though he's still a chance to square it for Emil Hesky. And uh, Darren Purse is the one to stick the toe in. So often the voice has gone up this afternoon because the chance has appeared in prospect, it's just not been taken. Well, that's right, it's interesting over on that far side there on the Liverpool bench now that uh, Gary McAllister's got his tracksuit bottoms off, the rest of the substitutes have sat down on the bench, but he is not only off the bench, tracksuit bottoms are off, but he looks as though he might be making an appearance soon. Ryan Hughes is coming on for Danny Sonner. Well, he's a player that uh, you know, a number of Birmingham fans, I think, thought might have been in the side to start off with. You know, he's, he's a good player, he's a good passer of the ball. Um, 
and he might just give them another option from the middle of the field now. He's also just about the only man to have won a cup final in Wales. He won the Welsh Cup final while he was uh, a player at Wrexham. Somehow I think this is just a mite bigger. Good player though, Brian Hughes. Gets goals from midfield. Going Birmingham. I know Birmingham don't want to lose today, but I was just reading the comments before the game of the chairman, David Gold, and he said if, if they had one objective this year, really, it's to get back into the Premier League. They've not been in the top flight since 1986, and that would be bigger for them than winning even today. Oh, I think so. I mean, I think uh, any first division side now, the most important thing for them, can they somehow get themselves into the Premiership where all the real money is, all the real glamour, and everybody wants to be part of it. It's just a giant circus in that Premiership now. And he can choose which of his four jets to fly to matches in. Are you going back in one of those tonight? Uh, not a lot, no, I don't think so. And the goalkeeper spilled it, but there's a free kick, inevitable. And Vestavell reacts against Perse. Well, Sander Vestavell is known to have a slightly short fuse. He's been sent off once in his Liverpool career. And he's going to get a lecture from the teacher. And I imagine so will Purse, though Purse has managed to romp about 50 yards away from the scene of the crime. I mean, to be fair, there's not a lot wrong with Sanders, but that's a silly kick out by Vestibald, and he's been a very, very lucky man for retaliating like that, because I think when the ball came in, it was a, it was a fair challenge, and this is a goalkeeper saying that as well. But uh, it was a fair challenge on Vestibald. But his reaction when he hit the floor, I thought, was very immature for somebody who is an international goalkeeper, um, played for Holland in the World Cup, and to react like that is very, very immature. Silly skirmish, bit of an eyeball, do eyeball. Purse will have to gallop 50 yards away again now. Still only the one goal in it, scored by Robbie Fowler. Heskey's up here, Fowler's into the area too, well covered by Johnson. Well, uh, half-hearted shout for a handball. Referee Ellery close to it, shook his head. And Eden tries to belt it up to Horsfield, it's covered by Hoopier. And Hoopier and Arncho have been uh, excellent at the back, and that long ball, the raking one, has picked out Fowler. Touched in here for Spitzer. Hammer. You see why Liverpool can tire the opposition out by just passing the ball around man to man, red shirt to red shirt. climbing there and well was there a handball by uh, Johnson well, certainly the ball hit his hand but his hand appeared to be coming down towards the ball it wasn't the ball going to the hand yeah I think to be fair to Mr Ellery he couldn't possibly have seen that it was certainly the wrong side of the player for him but that's why they have assistance luckily again for, for Birmingham the assistant was on the far side of the field and therefore probably wasn't in a position to see it himself one Michael Johnson playing basketball out there. That's why they call him Rogers. McCarthy's got to keep this in. Well, he did well to stretch there, McCarthy. That'll have tested his hamstrings. And, uh, well as Hughes battles Liverpool raid. Four red shirts steaming in on the Birmingham goal. It's still Haman, still Haman. And a tremendous challenge by Johnson, and now it's the blue shirts that stream out in the opposite direction. Johnson, Birmingham need a goal. Can Johnson give them one? He's run straight into a brick wall called Stephen Gerrard. Well, Stephen Gerrard now has gone down with cramp, but as I say, we, you know, he's been out for quite some time, and uh, certainly Henshaw there is trying to get the cramp out, out of him, but certainly there is a problem there, and uh, you know, that could be why McAllister has been warming up seriously for a good 
10 or 15 minutes. It's nothing short of astonishing that this game is still only separated by a single goal, though. Oh, it is, there's been so many chances, and, uh, you know, both managers at the end of the game, if it finished like this, then certainly Gerard Julio will be saying, well, we had enough chances to possibly win it by at least three goals, and Trevor Francis will have been saying in the second half we had enough half chances that we could have got something out of this game. McAllister preparing to come on, it could be Gerard, it could be Schmitzer, I suppose, depending on Gerard's cramp here. Well, they might just wait to see how he is before uh, the board is hoisted, but Gary McAllister at the age of 36 in his first season with Liverpool, uh, about to come on. He played in the final of 1996 for Leeds, and he was a, a beaten finalist that day, Villa murdered Leeds 3-0. And I think Gerard is going to have to leave the field. Dave uh, Galley, the uh, physiotherapist, and a thunderous reception for Gerard. I don't think too much for Sven Joran Eriksson to be concerned about there. A touch of cramp from a man just returning from an injury. Well, that's right. You know, uh, you know his injuries have been well documented. He's managed to get himself through 77 minutes of a full-blooded. Uh, cup final and uh, eventually the lack of match practice has caught up with him but he's done well to last that long of course now uh, Sven will be looking at him there and thinking well what state will he be in when I see him tomorrow or will I have to send him back to Liverpool on Monday night but he'll be hoping that uh, maybe it is just cramp and that the stiffness will wear off before he joins the England squad tomorrow Still looks cold doesn't he Sven Joran he'll have to get a new overcoat down here from one of the Welsh mills Spent too much time in Rome in the warm, hasn't he? To be fair, it's not that cold here today. Well, I don't think so, anyway. We've been warmed by the game. Fowler can apply pressure on Granger. The back pass is difficult because Hesk is raising in. It's only cleared as far as Smitzer. Here's the first touch of the ball for McAllister. Elegant player. Carragher has picked out Smitzer. Williams throw. Well, the Birmingham owner David Sullivan is wearing his uh, lucky blue suit, as he calls it today. It's only about the tenth time he's worn it, and they've never ever lost. He says if they do lose, he'll probably never ever wear it again. Well, at the moment, uh, he's on course for a first defeat in the blue suit, but. That's a free kick for Birmingham. Hope springs eternal so long as there's only the goal in it. And Eden has already played some good crosses in. Johnson's getting up there into the heart of the Liverpool area. In he goes. Spins away for Heskey, but it's up in the air. Lazaridis, one-on-one -on -one here with Oncho. He'll win the corner. Blue arms are all raised aloft. Just look at the banks of supporters here who've made the journey from Birmingham. Well, it'd be a great time to score now for Birmingham City. And Pearce pumps the header over the bar. Free header. Well, the Liverpool players are looking at each other there because that uh, was very poor marking, straightforward ball into the box. And look at Purse there, just uh, certainly Henshaw's come underneath it, Emil Heskey's not marking anybody, and Purse really should have hit the target there. But uh, they will, uh, you know, those are chances you've got to hit the target in the cup final. Cometh the hour, cometh the Brazilian striker, maybe. Marcelo coming on for Horsfield. Well, there was some doubt whether Jeff Horsfield would even start the day. As it is, he's uh, got through 80 minutes, but for the last 10, it's the Brazilian, although he considers himself Portuguese these days, Marcelo, once of Benfica under Alaves. He has got important goals for them. They've 10 minutes left in which to get one now, to at least take the game into extra time. Callister's header will only drop to O'Connor. Now it's Granger. Well, 
Azaridis over the top to Hughes, who slipped offside. Well, obviously bringing Marcelo on, it's it's meant the two big men have gone off and they're going to have to be more inventive now if they're going to try and get in and around the Liverpool back four and uh, they're going to have to be a little bit more patient in the selection of their ball into the front two rather than just pumping it forward, hoping that one of the big men can get on the end of it. Birmingham City nil, Liverpool won. Fowler trying to shield the ball. Rather tired attempted pass from Schmitzer. I think this pitch has taken its toll on a few players. Marcelo now, first time in the action. Well, yet again, Nicky Barnby, I think it is, it's warming up on that far side there, so, uh, you know, the introduction of him would not surprise me in this last uh, nine minutes of the game. In place of Smitzer, probably? Possibly in place of Smitzer, I would think that Gerard Houllier now is thinking, right, we've got the 1-0 win, do we need that man in the luxury position? We'll go to a midfield four and make sure that the worst thing that happens is to win this game 1-0. Well, I'm sure victory would be seen as a milestone in the coaching career of uh, Gerard Houllier. He supported Liverpool when he worked in the city many years ago. But it would be his first silverware. And, of course, he's still got the opportunity to win either the FA Cup or the UEFA Cup too. Johnson, uh, oh, I thought he might have got the corner there. Not so, in the opinion of Mr Ellery, and he's the only one who counts. And indeed, it is uh, Nicky Barmby's turn. And I think we got it right, uh, Ray. It will be Schmitzer off. Yes, as I say, it doesn't uh, surprise me that. Two reasons, I think, in this last 15 minutes that Schmitzer has looked a little bit jaded, not been uh, as lively as he was earlier on in the game. And probably more importantly is that I would imagine that uh, he'll go to, to a midfield four, although the way Nicky's come on, he's looking though he's going to go straight into Smyche's position and play in behind the front two, which is a position that he's very, very capable of. Birmingham have to commit themselves to attack. <laughs> this is the danger, they can get caught. Heskey, one of those surges of his, still Heskey. Fowler here, could win it, he could clinch it! Over and wide, Robbie Fowler. Looks to the heavens. First, the latest gone with cramp, I think. Well, I'm not sure if it's cramp or whether he's damaged uh, damaged his knee. I think he uh, he went up for a challenge there. I think it was with Heskey and uh, came down quite heavily on his uh, on his left knee, and uh, he might have twisted it there. And uh, that certainly uh, was what what all of the blue players were saying. Just looking from behind the goal at that effort for Robbie Fowler. I think I'd have backed him sort of eight times out of ten there. To hit the target, certainly, yes. And it's in a slight angle, it needs to be a good shot to have beaten uh, Ian Bennett there, but certainly they expect him to hit the target. Trevor Francis calling for calm out there, the adrenaline pumping. It's certainly an electric atmosphere. Now you can see Darren Pierce goes up for that... Uh, Darren Pierce, Pierce goes up for that challenge there and lands awkwardly on that left leg as he lands and uh, as I say I think it's a knee is damaged and Trevor Francis will be hoping that it isn't serious because obviously he's already used his three substitutes so the last thing they need in this last five or six minutes is to be down to ten men. Uh, Trevor Francis, very proud man, a great family man, his wife Helen here today and his two sons. Birmingham City through and through, he really is the prodigal son. But he wants some silverware for the club. They've been going 125 years, Birmingham City, and only won one really major trophy. This League Cup, uh, with all due respect, that is, to uh, things like the Leyland Daft Trophy and the Auto Windscreen Shield. I think we're going to have a lot of stoppages in these closing minutes. There's going to be a lot of time to add on. Well, we actually we finished up with a situation there where Brian Hughes and Andy Johnson have finished up catching each other and uh, I think Brian Hughes has got a bloodied nose from it but I think uh, he headed the back of Andy Johnson's head the two of them being so keen to go for the same ball who would be a manager he's hit the bottle it is only water I assure you for Trevor Actually, he looks reasonably calm David Sullivan the 
owner of Birmingham City, who is hiding that blue suit. He's obviously got rather a sore neck, is that a neck brace he's got on there? So there were a lot of sceptical people, weren't there, when David Sullivan took over and the Gold Brothers, who were West Ham United fans, really. But to be fair to them, they've pumped some money into the club and they've been with them several years now. Brian Hughes' bloody nose is still being uh, repaired. And he's going to have to uh, leave the pitch for it to be stemmed even further. So they are down to ten men for the moment, Birmingham, but they attack with O'Connor. Granger's loop ball is high. Shouldn't be a problem this for Hoopier. McAllister rather fortuitously got the ball half away. Now there's time for Babel to knock it up into the Birmingham half. A fouler is fouled by the fouler, Johnson. Crowd of 73,500 for this first major soccer final in the Millennium Stadium. And I swear to you, they're making just as much more noise as they did for that Rugby Union World Cup final, which you came to, I believe, Ray. Yes, I was lucky enough to come to that, and it uh, really was a special atmosphere. But uh, as you can rightly say, today has equalled it. Uh, it's the start of big games being here for possibly four years, and uh, anybody that comes to the stadium, I'm sure, will be impressed with it as a stadium and also the atmosphere that it generates. It's been terrific. And the game's been good as well. Don't let one nil fool you, it's never been dull. It's through with Johnson. Can't get past Hoopier though. Hoopier and Arnshaw have just been too strong at the back for whatever combination Trevor Francis has summoned up. Time very much running out. For Birmingham, the giant electronic scoreboard here shows that we've had 87 minutes, but there will be some time to add on, I'm sure. Johnson, a touch wide, Eden, Birmingham's uh, right wing back crosses it in. The right full back here today, Nick Eden. Enough pressure applied for it to burst away to McCarthy. Drifts it in, that's over Vesterveld and out. Yeah, disappointing ball in there from McCarthy because Liverpool gave the ball away needlessly and uh, there was three blue shirts in the box for him to hit there but uh, over hit it, not putting Vesterveld under any sort of pressure whatsoever and uh, because he's looked a little bit nervous on two or three of those situations you really, when you get in those positions, you need to try and test the goalkeeper. They've never stopped singing all afternoon but it looks as though they may have to rely on Liverpool winning a Champions League place if Birmingham are going to get into the UEFA Cup next season. They really are making massive strides at St Andrews, though, and they're investing another half a million pounds on a new training facility. Liverpool. have got the investment of a goal from Robbie Fowler at the moment. Could be good enough. Liverpool won the League Cup in 1981, 82, 83 and 84. They totally dominated the competition at the beginning of the 80s. Since then, just one success in 1995, two Steve McManaman goals did the job against Bolton. They are not far away now from holding the record for the most wins. Fowler looking to finish the job once and for all in company with Bishkan here. Uh, dances on past one and two, very ambitiously, hits it cross goal and straight into the crowd. But Gerard Ullier won't be too worried about that, it's wasted up a few more seconds. Four more minutes are to be added. I think that's about right. Yes, there's been obviously there's been two or three substitutions in this second half, and there's been a couple of injuries. Uh, to Darren Pierce, uh, Darren Pierce, sorry, and uh, also to uh, Brian Hughes as well, so I can understand that. You get the feeling that there are a few exhausted players out there. They've just got to keep going, and Hughes will do. Johnson's onside, and uh, might benefit from a ricochet. Forward comes Granger. 
Birmingham just got to keep battering away at that red door. Liverpool showing all their experience. European campaigners like Babel and Pancho and Upia. This is McCarthy for Birmingham. In for O'Connor, what's he doing up there? He's done well to get forward at this late stage of the game. McCarthy will try a different route, angling it in the general direction of Marcelo. One final tilt here, maybe, from Birmingham City. Granger hoists the ball in. There was a slip by uh, Upia, but he somehow still managed to get the ball forward. And listen at the roar now. It's Nicky Barnby on his way. He's got Fowler on his left. He's got Heskey there as well. Here goes Fowler. He'll cut it across, and it's wide and out. I think they're going to have to settle for 1 0. Yes, it looks like it there. Once Nicky Barnby played that ball through to, to Robbie Fowler, he was always going away from goal. Michael Johnson did well, to be fair to him, forcing him that way, and it was always going to be difficult for him to hit the target from that angle. Skill and poise from her man. Vesterveld will surely transfer it up to the halfway line as sharply as possible. Not even Heskey can get a touch on this. The Birmingham fans roaring their side forward. Almost demented they are. It's Hughes now. It's McCarthy. Here goes Johnson. If he can get goal side of Hoopy here, there might be something on. McCarthy's got a good, a good cross in. It is a good cross as well. Lazzarini's beaten by Babel. Granger's caught on the head. O'Connor's down. And the referee is going to give a penalty. O'Connor was taken out. Referee Ellery points to the penalty spot. Birmingham City have a lifeline in the most dramatic of circumstances here in time added on. Caught by Stefan Ancho and Martin O'Connor, the captain of Birmingham City, has won his team a penalty. Well, in the first place, I think Granger thought that uh, he was going to get a penalty. It was a foot that was quite high and caught Granger around his head somewhere. And then it was a desperate lunge there from Stefan Henshaw. And uh, he just, only just, but he did catch Martin O'Connor. Uh, Martin O'Connor and... Uh, well, they've got their just rewards. They've kept going all the second half. Liverpool have had opportunities, not finished them off. And all of a sudden, their, their persistence by Birmingham have given them a chance to come back and get back in this game. I mean, it really is an incredible end to it. Well, it's like a battlefield down there. There are bodies all over the place. O'Connor still hasn't uh, regained his feet. Granger is only just managing to stand up. And, of course, Martin O'Granger is a, a, ready, a regular penalty taker. Well, the Liverpool fans to our left-hand side, they're just stunned. They can't believe that uh, their team that has been in control of the game, albeit under some pressure in this last 15, 20 minutes, they looked like they were going to win this game, had enough opportunities to do it. Now they're facing a penalty and what will probably be the last thing that happens in this game, I would think. And there is just not a sound to our left-hand side. They're all stood in stunned silence. Well, it's an eternity, isn't it, between the actual act and uh, here it is again. O'Connor into the area, no question about that. Caught by Harnshaw. Referee Ellery had a good long look, didn't he? It's a terrible moment for a referee to have to give a penalty. Yes, I think he just caught the back foot. He did miss him with the first one, but caught him with the second one. And you can always tell whether it's a penalty or not because... Uh, you know, the, the Liverpool players, none of them really appealed to the referee. They knew that it was a it was a tackle, and if there was any doubt that, uh, whether O'Connor was caught or not, you can see him going off on a stretcher there in a minute. Um, he was certainly caught by Henshaw. How desperate must Trevor Francis be for his side to score, not just for the obvious reason to take the game into extra time, but then O'Connor going off could leave them with ten men for 30 minutes. That's right. Well, it looks as though Darren Purse is the one who's going to get the responsibility of taking this penalty in the last minute of the cup final, and this probably, well, will be certainly the most important strike of a ball he's ever had in his career. How brave is this for a centre-back who is not a regular penalty taker? He scored a couple of goals this season in regular play. It's Darren Purse to take the game into extra time. The Blues are alive. And the blue end of the Millennium Stadium is on its feet as one. Well, what an incredible end. I mean, the sights to our right-hand side are something special, I have to say. 
I would think now Trevor Francis came running onto the pitch there and jumping around in joy. But I would think the most important thing in his mind now is this game is obviously going to go to extra time. And can they get Martin O'Connor back onto the field? He is still on the stretcher over on that far side. All the drama of any cup final summed up there. Ten minutes ago, Darren Purse was out. He was on his last legs, wasn't he? And yet, here we go, he's just become the hero of the moment. They've now got to concentrate to make sure Liverpool don't regain the lead. In these dying, dramatic seconds, Fowler! And he can't beat Bennett. I tell you what, Sander Vesterveld nearly got to that penalty, but it was brilliantly struck by Darren Purse. It was, he went the right way, he was inches away from it, but, uh, you know, as, a, as we've said many times before, if a, if a penalty is struck well enough, then it's nigh impossible for a keeper to, to save it. Well, I must say that I'm, I'm delighted as a neutral because I've felt it's been a final that has deserved more than one goal, to be honest. And Birmingham have given their all. And for Darren Burst to strike it brings alive yet again the romance of cup competitions. Well, it, I mean, it is amazing. As I say, halfway through the, uh, the second half, it was just the case for me of when Liverpool got their second goal. Um, it really was there for him to go off and kill Birmingham. But to be fair to Birmingham, they battled, they persisted, they forced Liverpool back, they kept putting balls into the box and Liverpool were dealing with them quite comfortably. Uh, only did they have a couple of dodgy occasions. Um, but all in all, Liverpool were handling the pressure quite well. But Birmingham kept coming and coming and coming and eventually Liverpool cracked. And they might just draw inspiration from the events in a different competition last week of Trammy Rovers, who came from three down to knock out Southampton, of Wickham Wanderers, who came back to win a penalty shootout in the most dramatic of circumstances against Wimbledon. <laughs> well, certainly, uh, um, that might be in their mind afterwards, but at this present moment, I would think, as they're all stood there with, with uh, Trevor Francis, um, they'll be just thanking their lucky stars they're still in this game, and that they now, the lift that they'll have given the ten men that are out there, because I'm looking at Martin O'Connor over on that far side, he's off the stretcher, he's walking around, but he's walking around with a decided limp, and I think it will be a miracle if he can come back on the field and take part in this game. He's trying to jog now, but there's a definite problem with that left leg, and uh, I mean, they'll try and get him back because they're better having a limp in 11th body than trying to play with 10 men for 30 minutes there aren't many running around are there? as I said before there are bodies all over the place and Gerard Houllier well he's an animated Frenchman at the moment I can tell you he's jumping up and down there he's just trying to summon some more resources of energy from players who will be absolutely deflated there's nothing worse than giving a goal away in the last minute of a final well it's not just that mentally they'll obviously can't believe what's happened but as we mentioned at the start of the programme, they've already had three very difficult games. The last three games have been extremely difficult, particularly the one against Roma, when Roma beat them 1-0, but stretched them to the limit physically as well. And that was only on Thursday, so they haven't had long to recover. Now they've battled through this game. Uh, um, as I say, in the last 20 minutes, Birmingham were the ones that were pushing forward most of the time, and Liverpool hitting Birmingham on the break. But now, in this last 30 minutes, they've got to lift each other to push back at Birmingham now. I must say I'm delighted, Ray, that we're not going to have a golden goal because there's very tired players out there. One mistake could just let one side in. It should be a very dramatic 30 minutes now, no matter what happens. Oh, I think so. I agree with you. I think the golden goal, it puts too much responsibility on one person's possible error. Um, and therefore, you know, I don't think that's fair. So I think that uh, the 30 minutes extra time gives uh, both sides even chance and uh, well let's hope we see let's hope we see a winning goal in this 30 minutes if there's, well. if there's as many chances in this last 30 minutes as been in the first 90 then we should get one somewhere one last thought we've talked about Birmingham having three substitutes already what about a time to bring Michael Owen on with his pace well I would certainly that's a wonderful option for uh, for Gerard Houllier without a shadow of a doubt and uh, it will be in his mind but uh, he'll also be thinking to himself, well, you know, Robbie Fowler and Emil Heskey have caused problems in this first half. I just need one, sorry, in this game. I just need them to take one in extra time. 
Uh, Martin O'Connor's out there, but literally he's out there as Misty Motivator. He needs somebody alongside him because he's not going to be able to be too mobile out there. He's just really going to be a body trying to get through 30 minutes to help his team achieve something here. Yeah, it's going to be a tough 30 minutes for O'Connor. Of course, Brian Hughes got a smack on his nose a few minutes ago as well. Anyway, here we go. We're underway again. Settle back wherever you're watching around the world and enjoy these 30 minutes with us here. Uh, and what an apt first major final for the Millennium Stadium to stage. It couldn't have been more dramatic. No, and I'll say those Birmingham fans to our right, I don't think they can believe it. Although they were proud of their team. Johnson's not tired. And he thumps a shot over the top of the Liverpool crossbar. That'll uh, pump a bit of extra vigour into the veins. Yes, I mean, as I was saying about the fans, although they were, I'm sure they were very proud of their team, the way they battled today, I don't think in their wildest dreams they thought they were actually going to get something right at the death like that. That's why it's such a great game. People talk about the great Wembley finals. There haven't been too many in recent years, to be fair. But I think this will go down as well. Certainly in terms of incident, it will go down as uh, one of the more eventful uh, cup finals. And uh, Trevor Francis there, if you just, the camera unfortunately didn't go to him, but I looked across to the bench and his reaction when that uh, penalty went in was uh, very much similar to a, a certain David Pleat when he, for those that are old enough, remember his run onto a pitch when Luton stayed in the first division in the last game of the season. Barnby for Liverpool, doesn't get the cut back and... Three blue shirts surround him. Eden is the one who has played it up to Marcelo. Hughes. The crowd told him that there was a man advancing, and poor O'Connor stumbles into giving a good ball uh, to uh, Eden. Johnson. No free kick, but it's picked up by Hughes for Birmingham City. McCarthy on his right. Two Birmingham men in the middle. McCarthy fails to uh, get around. The uh, defender, though, uh, Jamie Carragher. Well, spotlight very much on O'Connor, but you couldn't ask for a, a better fighter as a captain of a side. He's got great respect in the game. He has, uh, and you, you can see just in the corner of your picture, Lazaridis there is, is not too far away from O'Connor because... Hughes ball in. Good catch, Sander Westerveld. He's not too far away from uh, O'Connor because the last thing that Birmingham need is for O'Connor to be ex exposed in the middle of that field. Huge kick for Investerveld, and Johnson does well to duck his head into it. <laughs> Two and a half minutes played in the first period of extra time. Granger slashes the ball from one side of the field to the other. Marcelo gets the better of Bishkan, who won't have played in too many atmospheres like this. This is Johnson. Does well, holds it up, gives it to Marcelo a second time. Then it's Hughes, Birmingham giving as good as they're getting. They are right back in the contest here. They've been lifted so much by Darren Percy's penalty. Johnson might tee it up for McCarthy. Well, what does a goal do to a team? It is amazing. Well, sometimes it's difficult for a team to change their, their mental attitudes. You know, on Thursday when Liverpool played Roma, they got pushed back and couldn't get out of their own half um, and found it very, very difficult. In this second half here, Birmingham have pushed on, pushed them back, and all of a sudden Liverpool need to change their tactical plan. And at the moment, in this first period of extra time, they're finding it very difficult to do, and it is Birmingham who are in the ascendancy still. This man's certainly playing his part. Johnson held it up for well enough to induce a free kick out of Hamad. And no matter how many international caps this Liverpool squad have got to their names, they'll be just fretting a little bit at the moment. They know that they've lost their chance. Well, they know that they've missed a lot of opportunities when they could have killed the game off, and sometimes when you don't do that, you pay dearly for it at the end. And uh, that might just be going through one or two of their minds at the moment. Good so, Certainly, uh, McCarthy's cross, Hughes over the top, and Liverpool were caught standing still. Well, Bishkan and Carragher are having a real go at each other. How on earth McCarthy could be in that amount of space? And, and Brian Hughes running in there across the front man gets a half a chance, 
uh, tries with his left foot when maybe his right foot would have been a better opportunity to hit the target. But but as soon as that cross came in and the ball went over the bar, Carragher and Bishkan were having a real go at each other at how that ball was allowed to come in. Eski climbing, but they've combated him once more. Eden's impressed me today, and he's played another good ball in here for McCarthy. He just keeps it in play, that's good enough though. He'll twist and turn Carragher, but back comes Haman. Well, so Christian Zieger, I think it is, over the far side. He's got his kit off, so uh, we'll be seeing him being introduced at, uh, at some stage now, as soon as, as, soon as uh, Gerard thinks it's, it's the right time. But, of course, if he does that, then we're not going to see Michael Owen. Another cross from Hughes, met by Hoopier. Yeah, I mean, you've got to say that Michael Owen must be fit, otherwise he wouldn't be among the 16 players. We know he's tweaked his hamstring consistently, and that is a, an ongoing concern for Liverpool. But I'm surprised he's in the 16 and not going to get a run at a stage like this. Yes, I mean, uh, Gerard Julio, if he's bringing Christian Zieger on, he's either not happy with the way that uh, things are happening defensively and therefore might bring Carragher off, or he's not happy with the system in the middle of the field. And in fact, it's Bishkan, I think, that is going to be coming off here. Um, and Zieger, obviously, would be a straight replacement playing that left side in midfield, please. Well. Bishkan looks a very hapless man there, but it does mean that we're not going to see Michael Owen today. And that's probably a relief to Birmingham at a stage like this. A lot of exhausted footballers. Birmingham attacking with Hughes. Uh, what great composure Darren Purse showed to strike that penalty, and especially as he had to wait so long before planting the ball down 12 yards out. Yes, yeah, certainly um, while the wait was going on, I at that time wasn't sure who was going to take the penalty, and I was thinking to myself then, whoever is going to take this penalty has had to think about it for an awful long time. Well, you know why, Ure, the regular penalty takers are Martin Granger and Martin O'Connor, who were both injured. Purse grabbed the ball, didn't he? And he said, that's mine. Oh, he did, yes, there was no hesitation about it, and uh, he had a quiet, confident air about himself, and certainly he could not have struck the penalty any better and any closer into the corner. I don't think Liverpool have created anything in this period of extra time as yet. I don't remember Ian Bennett touching the ball. No, you're quite right, he hasn't at this present moment in time. Since the uh, extra time has started, this is his first touch of the ball. And that's from a back pass. Certainly uh, in the second half, Robbie Fowler and Vladimir Smitzer both missed very takeable chances. And Liverpool could have been on their way up the steps by now and uh, running round with the cup, but they're not. And of course, Emil Heskey had one at the near post he put over the top as well, so they did have enough chances in that second half. McAllister doesn't get the ball through. There's no doubt about it, Birmingham are playing with greater purpose than Liverpool at the moment. And Lazaridis gets it on for Johnson here. On shows tired, he's onside, it's Johnson. Still he goes, no penalty this time. Nor was there uh, a right to be, I don't think. No, I think it was a, certainly a slip. He just got round Henshaw there, but certainly had, the pair of them slipped there. There we can see the turf going away from him, and certainly no penalty. At the other end of the field, we've got Martin Granger down with the cramp as well. He's being helped to his feet by Darren Purse. So it's all happening here at the moment. That's making me feel exhausted. Here's the hero, Purse. That's his third goal this season. But uh, no doubt about it, the biggest goal of his career. I bet Sven Joran's enjoying it. Well, he's, he's probably, he was probably hoping to go up to the England headquarters a bit earlier tonight, but he's going to be stuck with everybody else now. Uh, and he'll be getting to the team hotel a lot later. Lazaridis to Hughes. He's got to do it all by himself, and he's chipped Mr. the gold. That would have been one of the goals of all time. Unbelievable effort. Oh, that was an incredible effort, because as soon as he went past the player, he looked up. Watch him. He glides past the player, he now looks up, there he looks, he knows where Westerveld is, and that's a magnificent chip, and that 
was a magnificent save. There he looks, he knows where Vesterveld is, and that's going in. That's a tremendous save. All the drama of this 53rd League Cup final encapsulated in that one moment. Terrific effort, terrific save. Corner for Birmingham City. They're hammering them here. His purse once again. Trading headers with Heskey. Liverpool finding it hard to get out. Now they can with Barmby. Heskey's header this time. Only to Lazaridis. He's kept going very well. Forward goes Johnson. He's a willing runner, this boy. 20 years of age. Played for England in the uh, World Under-20 Youth Championships in Nigeria. Clever play, McAllister. He'll drive forward. Fowler. That was tired from Fowler. He thought his goal had won the match for Liverpool, but it hadn't. Now it's Marcelo, McCarthy's here, giving it for Johnson. It's all about Birmingham's attack in Liverpool's defence. And it's that Liverpool defence that stands firm in the shape of Marcus Babel. Goodness me, five minutes left in this first period of extra time. Still one apiece. Can't believe how quickly this extra time's gone. There's just so much happening on the pitch that it's just difficult to keep up with it all. Forward it goes, Fowler's one-on-one -on -one with Johnson. Robbie Fowler at the end of the field where he scored has won a free kick. Handball by Johnson. Furious. Uh, I think Michael Johnson thinks there that uh, Robbie Fowler played it into his chest rather than his arm. Here we see it, Robbie Fowler tries to play the ball across Michael Johnson. Hits him basically right on the top of the shoulder there. Uh, but maybe uh, it's evened itself out because he certainly got away with the handball <laughs> in the second half, which maybe could have cost his side a penalty. And I can tell you it's bedlam in the millennium at the moment. And only Johnson is not behind the ball in a blue shirt. Now uh, Gary McAllister, Deep Mahaman and Christian Zieger surround the ball. Liverpool looking to regain the lead with McAllister. Bennett palms it down and grabs it again as Barnby advanced on him. Impossible to say which way it's going to go, it really is. But huge credit to Birmingham City, to their coaching staff of Trevor Francis, Mick Mills, Ian Bowyer, who knew great times themselves, of course, in the days when Nottingham Forest used to regularly win this competition. But they really have got their players up for it. Well, certainly they've got that belief in them that, uh, you know, they've come here, everybody said it would be an easy game for, for Liverpool. And, uh, so they've come as the underdogs, they're not expected to do anything, so there wasn't a great deal of pressure on them. Uh, and that has worked to their advantage. And the longer the game's gone, the more confident they've got, the more belief in themselves that they can actually go and win this game. And as I say, I'm sad to say as, as an ex Liverpool player, but <laughs> in this uh, period of extra time, it certainly is Birmingham the side that look as though they, they could go on and win this game. And you do just wonder how much the efforts, the strenuous efforts of last week are paying on Liverpool, you made the point at the top of the uh, game, Ray that Liverpool have had an amazing week, haven't they, with the, the Roma match Manchester City only a week ago Yes, and then obviously Roma away the week before, which had that tremendous result beating in 2-0, so you know, people might think, oh, it's only three games in ten days they're professionals, but it does take an awful lot out of spectators as well as players, as we can see there I don't know to laugh or cry at the moment. Marcelo's gone well to get a header in there, but Hoopy is in ahead of Johnson. Anywhere will do for Carragher. The real up and under here. McCarthy tricks Seeger in for Marcelo. Strong fellow Marcelo. Formerly with Sheffield United, Eden's cross. Well out by Hoopier. Birmingham come again, a little blue tide of attacks now. Forward it goes for Brian Hughes. Took it down skillfully, but there to tidy up was Jamie Carrigan. And in steps Purse. He's really got the bit between his teeth. Here's Andy Johnson. He's down again, and the referee is shake of the head. No penalty this time. Francis Furious. 
Well, you have to say, until we see it again, it looked very ominous. He's touched the ball first and then gone over. Well, I've seen penalties given for less than that, I have to say. Certainly caught him after. He did play the ball, to be fair, but he did go over the leg. And referee Ellery very much at the centre of controversy here. Martin O'Connor still asking for an explanation. What about that? He's got a smile on his face, hasn't he? He well, hasn't. He knows David Ellery he won't change his mind, and uh, if this doesn't go to Francis' way at the end, then I'm sure he'll have something to say about that decision. No, he doesn't come from Spain, he doesn't change his mind. Free kick Liverpool now. As we've had our 15 minutes in this first period of time added, and uh, McAllister, with 60 seconds remaining, pops one up there, offside. And the Birmingham fans think there's a little bit of justice in that. You know, it's amazing, isn't it? Birmingham City, fourth in the first division, 19 points behind the runaway leaders, Fulham, taking on Liverpool, third in the Premier League, and yet there's nothing between them. No, there certainly hasn't been uh, as the game has wore on. I mean, I was amazed earlier on when I was looking at the statistics before the game started. But this competition has really lifted Birmingham Football Club. Um, certainly before they got to the semi-finals, I think they lost four league games on the trot um, and they were dropping out of the, of the promotion race. But they had the first good result of their Ipswich and then their season has picked up and they've got better and better. Confrontation involving uh, Sander Westerveld. Uh, but by and large it's been good and uh, none of the 73 and a half thousand will forget this one that's for sure I was just thinking I wonder how many of those 73 and a half and I don't think it would have been many but there may well have been a number of Birmingham fans that left in that injury time thinking well we've had a real go at it but it isn't our day but uh, I bet if they were halfway down the road they came running back to the stadium quickly to be honest I'm hoping they're halfway up the motorway by now but uh, judging from the congestion before the game it's not going to be the easiest of trips back so 15 minutes to go 15 minutes away from one of those dreaded penalty shootouts which I have to admit I enjoy I think uh, you as a goalkeeper probably didn't Ray but it is dramatic and it is a way of sorting a match out through skill. You've got to be skillful to beat modern goalkeepers. Well, you've got a strong mental character as well. It's not just the skill, it's the, it's the physical and the mental side of being able to uh, deal with the inevitable, inevitable pressure that comes from that penalty shooter, particularly if you're one of the later penalty takers. Whatever happens, there has got to be further drama. It's either going to come from a goal in these 15 minutes or from the penalties. Callister battles with Johnson. Birmingham emerge with the ball. Slews away off the side of Bennett's boot. What a battle it's been between Heskey and Purse. And you've got to say that Darren Purse has done exceptionally well against Emil Heskey after a, a shaky start, maybe. Well, certainly for me, in the first, uh, certainly the first half and possibly the first 15 minutes of the second half, Heskey was well on top of it and caused Perth a lot of problems. But the longer the game has gone on, he has got stronger. Uh, we're seeing less and less of Emil. He's getting himself caught offside now, uh, giving away silly little free kicks and looks quite a dejected character down there at the moment. Whereas at the other end of the field, Andy Johnson, I think, has made such a difference to Birmingham coming at half-time. Good point that there's a good tactical substitution made at half time. The withdrawal of Andy Bowler and the introduction of Johnson has really fired Birmingham up. Here's Marcelo now. He'll hit a shot and it dips over the bar. Scored in the win against South End United and nearly scored here against Liverpool. Marcelo. Well, it was nearly a, a copybook uh, goal of like Robbie Fowler's first one, wasn't it? Dipping volley, 23 yards out just didn't get it to come down enough and I think also maybe Sander Westerveld may well have been in the right position if it had have been lower he might have got to it anyway he has a good scoring record Marcelo and uh, every time he scored Birmingham have gone on to win Fowler up against Johnson covers the ground well no questioning Johnson's fitness
referee Ellery. I think he's actually going to take the yellow card out and show it to Deep Mahaman, and that, by my reckoning, is the first of the day. Yes, totally correct, and uh, there have been a few tackles similar to that through the game. Nothing really vicious, but uh, for some reason he's decided maybe I don't go through games without giving one yellow card at least. Still a lot of tiredness down there. As these two sides slug it out, Hughes, still Hughes. Critical intervention by Hoopier. Simply stood his ground and Hughes couldn't get around him. Babel has come tearing up for Liverpool and he'll carry on tearing up too. Here goes Marcus Babel. Tremendous tackle by Granger out for the corner. Don't know why Granger's complaining. Maybe he thinks the ball touched Babel on the way out. Good covering though from Martin Granger. Yeah, tremendous covering. I think he obviously thinks that when he got the block, it went off him and then hit Babel and went out for a goal kick. But uh, obviously from this angle, we couldn't see that. But uh, he doesn't need to get himself hit up about a simple thing like that. He wants to get his concentration back on uh, dealing with this corner kick. Which will come in now flat, booted out by Hughes. I was just casting my mind back 12 months there to a certain Matt Elliott who headed the winner for Leicester City against Tranmere Rovers. And the big defenders can play a part here. Babel was off again. In fact, Liverpool's defenders, uh, Babel and Hoopier, have contributed quite a few goals this season. In goes Heskey, countered by Purse. Forward for Stan Lazaridis, the Australian. Uh, oh, he's blocked here by Onshow. That's surely going to be a booking, I would have thought. No attempt to play the ball by the Swiss defender, the one who gave the penalty kick away. And uh, Mr Ellery uh, is going to book him. Yes, uh, you know, Henshaw's an excellent defender, but he's not the quickest in the world. And he knew then that when Lazaridis stuck that ball past him, he was never going to live with him. Johnson. Might be an indication of the way the game's going that both bookings have been incurred by Liverpool players. Marcelo will get a header in. Claimed by Westerveld. Ten minutes to go of extra time here in the Millennium Stadium, Cardiff. A match to relish. And we haven't a clue who's going to win it. Carragher. Purse, the inspired Darren Purse. For McCarthy. Free kick. Certainly Liverpool are giving away more free kicks. Well, they are. And the amazing thing is, Martin O'Connor, who is really struggling, he, he can just about run five or ten yards in a straight line, and that's it. You wouldn't know that they had a real injury problem out there because Liverpool are not exposing them. And, and Gerard Hillier there, I'm sure, is far more worried at this present moment in time than the Trevor Francis we saw moments before. I'm sure he is. But we all know anything can happen in a game of football, and Liverpool have this free kick. Well, as we said earlier on, while it was 1-0 to Liverpool, Birmingham always had that chance, and they believed it, they kept going, and they've had their reward. Christian Ziga, the substitute. It's a great ball in, Fowler takes it in one, across comes Johnson, it'll break for McAllister, Fowler again with a header! Brilliant save, Ian Bennett. Drama of plenty here, McAllister to the four. Fowler had two nibbles at that, Bennett was equal to it. Yes, I mean, when the second ball comes in here, Robbie gets a good header on it, and that, I'm not sure that it would have gone in or not, but certainly Bennett could not leave it and was across very, very quickly to that right-hand side and made sure. I think you're right, I think it was going out, doesn't matter, he had to make the stop. McAllister will clip in the corner, Hoopy is up there, and it's bravely headed up in the air by Johnson. Appeals for a penalty from Liverpool fans, more in desperation, I think, than reality. Well, it's unquestionably the last, best League Cup final there has been in years and years and years. Babel, he's kept going, and he's romping forward again. Liverpool trying to get another surge of adrenaline going now, and that's a free kick conceded by Marcelo.
you just get a sense that Liverpool are just trying to get to grips with things again here. This is a dangerous position. Ziger is exceptional from the opposite side of the pitch with his left, with his left foot. He really does whip balls in, and Birmingham will need to develop, defend this one very, very well. It's Christian Ziger, and it is in, and Hoopia, and Bennett clings on. Sammy Hoopia met it on the fall from Christian Ziger, but uh, Bennett down to it. Hoopia might think he should have scored. I think so. I think there was probably just enough pressure from Darren Purse behind him that, that Hoopia couldn't actually get a lot, a lot of power in it. Directs it into the corner, but that's all he could do. And Johnson has nicked it away from Carragher. It's a good ball up from McCarthy. Birmingham's chance to apply pressure on the Liverpool goal with seven minutes of extra time left. Well, in 1995, these two sides met in the FA Cup and Liverpool beat Birmingham on penalties that night. And uh, would you believe Birmingham... Here goes Johnson. Birmingham missed every single penalty on that occasion. But that was one day, this is another. McCarthy. I can tell you, every single one of those players down there will be hoping it doesn't go to penalties. It's amazing, really, the first 60 minutes we hardly saw anything of McCarthy at all. But again, as the game's gone on, he's become more and more of an influence. Deflection, but Festival kept the ball in play. There's another good ball in from Nicky Eden, I do think he's played well. Hughes takes it again from Johnson. Doing well, Hughes, at the moment. There was support arriving in the shape of Granger on the left. Granger right-footed cross ball. Marcelo drops to Ziga, calmly prods it into the direction of Hammer. Liverpool move forward in numbers. They've got four up here, maybe even five. Still, it's Marcus Babel. He's come a long way, Babel. Critical challenge back by Lazaridis. Did the job for Birmingham City. It's just like two prize fighters, fighters standing toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Well, Jamie Carragher just made a last-ditch tackle some 30 seconds ago, and he's struggling, he's done something like a, a hamstring, he's nicked or he's got cramped, but he is struggling out on this side. As you say, they're just going for each other, there is just nobody has given in. Everybody's given every bit of energy they possibly can. Haman will pump the shot in, off the upright! What else can happen in this match? Unbelievable! Well, Dietmar Hermann destroyed England at Wembley in the last match played there. He nearly destroyed Birmingham City in the first at the Millennium Stadium. Well, to be fair to Ian Bennett, if it had been on target, I think he might have actually just got a touch to it. But, uh, you know, let's put it at say to Ian Bennett, you had your angles right. I'm being cynical here, but uh, Michael Owen in the stands, of course, missed a penalty last week. Uh, Julia might have decided that Ziga was a better option than the penalty shootout. I'm sure when he put Ziga on, he was not thinking about it going to penalties. He might have to do in a minute. Forward goes Sammy Hoopier, the finish international, great ball into the area. Bennett's got it to head of Barmby, though. They've only ever met on three previous occasions, these sides, in the League Cup. <laughs> Liverpool won twice, the other match was drawn, but this is a terrifically courageous show from Trevor Francis's Birmingham. And he'll be proud of every one of those players. They're on £10,000 a man to win today. Well, I'm sure that'll be the last thing that's in their mind. I keep reading things about they're on this money and that money, but all that matters is winning this Cup final. Certainly given us a match to remember. Babel has found Barmby through the middle. Heskey's on his right. Babel's on his right as well. It's going to come back Babel's way. Influential figure Marcus Babel at the moment. In high, Bennett's got to get there and does. Could have landed very awkwardly there, but he did well. Held on to the ball. 
Well, that's an excellent catch because the one thing Ian Bennett isn't, he isn't the tallest goalkeeper in the world, but kept his eye on it and made a tremendous catch. Here goes Lazaridis for Birmingham, uh, the centre cut out by Hoopia. O'Connor could just about stagger to the ball and to feed it to John McCarthy. Who's going to be the hero today? It's McCarthy's shot, sails over. Head in the hands for Trevor Francis. Yes, it's head in the hands for John McCarthy as well because Nicky Eden had run 40 yards there to get on the outside in an overlapping position. And he just needed McCarthy to thread the ball to him, but went for glory and we saw what happened. Two minutes remain. Two minutes between uh, a one-all scoreline and a penalty shootout. Johnson's darting in there, we know he's got pace. And uh, Anshu has to come back. Westerveld just fingernails the ball away and then hurls it down the left and says to Christian Zieger, go on, for goodness sake, go and win us the trophy. The tension unbearable for the two sets of supporters, that is for sure. The UEFA Cup awaits the winners, but for now, Hoopia strides forward. Referee Ellery looks at the watch. I've not seen a board hoisted to tell us how much longer there is before penalties. Granger gets a header away. Babbles won it. Here comes McAllister for Liverpool. Barmby, McAllister on his outside. Barmby comes inside. A lot of red shirts around. Parler can't chip it over the top of Hughes, though. And Birmingham are away again and out of trouble. Thirty seconds. Headed into the middle, straight through to Bennett. Well, I told her that the Rugby Union World Cup final was staged here, but uh, for me, this has been far more dramatic than that. I know they love their rugby down in this part of the world, but soccer has really made its bow here with a vengeance. Johnson's header away. And just think Birmingham seemed dead and buried until the penalty was conceded in the last minute of the game of the 90 minutes when Robbie Fowler's goal was cancelled out by Darren Purse from the penalty spot. And he's going to have to step up her probably and do it all over again now. Yes, certainly. I would imagine that he'll be one of the five for Birmingham that uh, will be taking those penalties. And uh, as I say, what a, a wonderful advert for the game. You know, the first time down here in Wales at Cardiff, Millennium Stadium, everything about it has been right. The organis organisation has been right. The atmosphere has been fantastic. Uh, Joe it's Corrigan there the stood with, uh, with Sander Vestervelt telling him what he thinks about uh, saving penalty kicks. Chance for Vestervel or Bennett to finish up being heroes. But uh, going back to what I was saying before, it's just been a marvellous uh, afternoon of entertainment for uh, for both sets of fans and for anybody who's in a neutral situation. And it's been a great advert for the game. The first thing Trevor Francis has got to check here is who wants to take them. Because we all know that some players will bottle it on the day. Well, I, I think the way that he's got that piece of paper in his hand that uh, they have already decided before this game started that if it went to penalties these are the five that are going to take it, it's just what order they're going to take them in, I think that's what they're deciding on now The penalties I understand it to be taken at the end uh, where the Liverpool supporters are gathered you know what I mean there though Ray, that five players might have said initially okay and then one of them might just be feeling Exhausted, you know, and, and not <laughs> mentally right. One of them, it could be, it could be any of them. <laughs> we'll do enough. And of course, all the substitutes, all the non players like the Jamie Rednaps and the Danny Murphys are out there as well, just encouraging them for one last effort, aren't they? Now, the scoreboard there, it's a fan thing, it says. Well, I don't think there's a fan here today who's not enjoyed this. Well, it's impossible not to have done. It really has been a fabulous afternoon. Um, you know, this is, a, this is a great advert for the game and, uh, and a great start 
to a lot of big games that are going to happen in this stadium. Yep, FA Cup final to come. Wicked Wonders against Chambly Rovers, maybe, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, yeah, that's the, the thinking. Yeah, well, the way this last week's gone with the underdogs competing with the, ma with the major players, uh, anything could happen. Sander Westerveld composed. Uh, in your position, uh, Ray, when you were a player, and you were a goalkeeper, of course, did you prefer to get the first penalty in? Um, I think it's I think it's nice if you're always in front. So if you, I think um, if you take the first penalty and you get your noses in front, then uh, it's always the pressure is always on the, the next taker. Um, so I think it is an advantage to go first. Ian Bennett, what a moment for him. He was. Uh, Barry Fry's first signing in 1993 for Birmingham City from Peterborough United. 325,000 he cost. I don't suppose he ever dreamt of a day like this then. Vesterveld, of course, came from uh, Vitesse Arnhem for four million pounds. Liverpool have had a succession of goalkeepers over recent years, of course. Uh, David James, Brad Friedel. Vesterveld, the man in possession, and I noticed uh, Peggy Arfaxad uh, was down there encouraging him. Well, there's no more that can be done now, but I do think it is a fair way. I know a lot of people disagree with that view, but, you know, it is a, an art to put a penalty away. It's uh, a part of the game. Somebody's about to become a hero. Well, the two lads in the green walking down there, and Bennett's the one we're looking at. He's got to face the penalty first by the looks of things. It's a chance to become a hero. Um, he's not expected to save them, so he can only win. And one of those two lads in the green are going to finish up as a hero at the end of the afternoon. First up, Gary McAllister. I know he won't thank me for mentioning it, but of course he missed one for Scotland against England. In a vital match at Wembley Stadium, but Gary McAllister has scored a lot of penalty goals throughout an illustrious career. Can he make it first blood to Liverpool? scores great moment in the career of Gary McAllister he raises a finger one up Liverpool yeah, tremendous experience McAllister's got there and uh, he's the sort of player you want to come up and take that first one supremely confident and uh, tucked it past uh, Bennett's left hand with him going the opposite way Martin Granger here walking up uh, looks quite confident is laughing at the abuse he's getting from the Liverpool fans, but uh, I wonder what he's really feeling inside. He's Birmingham's regular spot kick taker. I was amazed he didn't uh, take the one in normal time, and he's blown it. Brilliant save by Vesterveld, and Granger cannot believe it. Liverpool draw first blood. Well, it's a well-struck penalty. Vesterveld's decided to go to his left-hand side and it's at a good height, it's not right on the floor, but it's just that foot or so off the floor, gives you a chance, and that really was it, it was a marvellous save, and Granger struck it well enough, but Vesterveld knew the way it was going. A big moment in the career of Nicky Barmby, who's not won things in his career with previous clubs at Tottenham and Middlesbrough and Everton, it's Nicky Barmby to make it 2-0. Is he happy? And that's what I mean about going first as well. You know, McAllister scores, Granger fails, Barnby makes it 2 0. Now Darren first walking up there knows that if he doesn't score with this one, they're virtually dead and buried. So it's enormous pressure. First needs to score with this. But having said that, he needed to score with the one before and did it confidently. Well, he showed enormous character then. He's got to do it for a second time now. Most players don't take one penalty in the final. Darren Purse. And he beats Vesterveld for the second time. That simply had to go in, and going it did. Whatever happens today to Birmingham City, Darren Purse is never going to forget this one. No, that's true, and it was a great penalty as well. Again, it was the same side as the one that he stuck in an injury time, but... He struck it a little bit higher, and there's no way that Westerville was going to save that. Ziga to make it 3-1. 3-1 it is. Never a doubt from the moment it left the left boot of the German. 
And Liverpool, uh, shall we say, halfway there. Well, unfortunately, we've never seen a German miss the penalty, have we? Good point. Have we ever seen a Brazilian? It's Marcelo, and this has to go in, no question about that. We said the same about Darren Perth. Trevor Francis, I'm sure, can hardly bear to watch. They can't, it's Marcelo. The man from Brazil smacks it in, they're still alive. 3-2. And in Portuguese, he encourages those Birmingham fans to get behind the Blues. Still has to go in for Liverpool, of course, and it's another German, Dietmar Hamann. Yes, well, he's been involved in these before, hasn't he? So, again, he'll be uh, quietly confident about it. But in Ian Bennett, there's just something about him, I think he's likely to save one of these. And that's the one! Prophetic! How on earth did you know that, Ray Clements? Uh, he's just a very, very agile goalkeeper, and he just needed to guess right once, and he always had a chance. And, uh, you know, he's done nothing wrong in the game today. He may have been caught slightly off his line a little bit with the uh, opening goal, but uh, struck with pace from the man, but he gave Bennett a chance, and when he was quick as Bennett is, then he made the save. It's Stan Lazaridis to get Birmingham level at 3-3. It's 3-3! Well, shades of the Wickham Wimbledon game last week. Where Wickham came back from uh, the dead almost. And Stan Lazaridis kept his cool. Well, pleased for him because uh, he's had a very, very good game for Birmingham throughout. So uh, pleased that he's scored. And now it's down to Robbie Fowler to stick number five in the net and put enormous pressure onto the possibly the last penalty taker of Birmingham. He thought his goal had won it in normal time, did Robbie Fowler. Left-footed, he steps up now and chips it. How cool is that? 4-3. Now, then, that might be the winner. Who knows? And who would be Brian Hughes of Birmingham City right now? If he misses, it's Liverpool's Cup. Yes, if he scores, it it's on. It is, but uh, to be fair, since he came on in the, in the second period there, he's played very, very well. He's full of confidence, uh, but he'll need to be because he knows that uh, the city of Birmingham is watching and there are 35,000 Birmingham fans that are on his shoulders at the moment. Brian Hughes has to score, and Brian Hughes does score. And uh, that's a monumental effort from him, and Trevor Francis shows no emotion. Hughes does 4-4. So we've had our first five penalty takers. It's now through to those who were praying that they didn't have to step up. Well, Jamie Carragher in the last five or ten minutes of, of extra time was struggling to put one leg in front of the other. And I would think this is the last thing that he wants at the end of a cup final. Let's hope he's got the composure and the mental strength to actually stick this in the net. Well, it's more drama than anybody had a right to expect. Jamie Carragher presents a stern figure. Socks roll down, smacks it in wide of Bennett's left hand. Tired or not tired, he's done the job and it's 5-4 Liverpool. And Andy Johnson, a 20-year-old, is next to step up with a ball in his hand to keep the Blues alive. Well, Jamie Carragher was superb there. He was so positive because he is absolutely exhausted there. And I just feel sorry now for whoever is going to miss the one that wins the cup for the opposition. It's Andy Johnson, and that's the one, and Sander Westerveld has won the Worthington Cup for Liverpool. Andy Johnson, crestfallen, walks a disconsolate figure away on his own, puts his shirt over his head, he normally does that when he scores goals. The first up to commiserate with him will be Darren Purse, no blame attached whatsoever to that young man. Sander Westerveld is engulfed by jubilant players in red, but my, how close have they come to being beaten by Birmingham? Well, they've become so, so close, it's untrue. And you always feel sorry for Lewis. I feel particularly sorry for Andy Johnson because he, for me, as much as anybody, coming on at half-time, made the difference in Birmingham. He all of a sudden gave them something up front they'd never had 
in that first half. And although he must feel crestfallen at the moment, he's been part of a wonderful effort by Birmingham to get back into, the, into this game and make it a truly memorable cup final. Well, I was going to say defeat for Trevor Francis, but it's not defeat at all, really. They've drawn the game with one of the best teams in, in Europe, in Liverpool. They've not lost at all today, Birmingham City. They've won a lot of friends. Here's Yari Lippmann and joining in the uh, celebrations. Vesterveld, the Dutchman. Julio, I saw uh, Phil Thompson going over to commiserate with Trevor Francis a second ago as well. It's always disappointing to lose a final, but Birmingham, I'm sure, can take an enormous amount out of today. Oh, certainly. I mean, I'm sure that their fans will be going back up that motorway. Very, very proud. Disappointed, yes, because uh, certainly in the latter periods of, of the game, certainly the second half and extra time, they more than acquitted themselves, were equal to Liverpool and with a little bit of luck might actually have won it. But certainly, uh, you know, Trevor Francis there with... Uh, I don't know who's the most disappointed. How emotional Trevor is that shot? Trevor or... Andy. In fact, Trevor looks worse than Andy. Karen Brady and David Gold, the managing director and the chairman of Birmingham City there. Words are impossible at a time like this. But, uh, you did see a tear in Trevor Francis's eye, that's for sure. And Stan Lazaridis. Nobody played better than him for Birmingham today. No, he gave everything. And uh, as I say, Trevor Francis can be proud of his team and Michael Johnson there was a tear in his eye there as well that we just briefly saw but obviously what Trevor Francis has got to try and do now is lift this team after this game and make sure that they finish up at least in a playoff position to get into the premiership because certainly what we've seen here today they're capable of doing that and capable of holding their own in the premiership as well he often looks a tormented figure, does Trevor, and nobody wants to see Birmingham City back at the top of the British game more than him, a man who won the European Cup for Nottingham Forest, of course, but Birmingham City through and through. And those tears will be forgotten if Magic Johnson there and co make it into the Premier League come the end of the season. Yes, it's, uh, you know, sometimes you hear fans saying players don't care. Well, I think two or three of the pictures we've seen here show that they do care. But uh, all this talk about money, it's the last thing that's ever in their mind. They just want to win the game and to, to have a trophy or a, or a medal sat in their cabinet at the end of their career. And very few players get too many opportunities to get that medal. And these lads in the blue shirts today know that a massive opportunity has gone past them today. We've concentrated a great deal on Birmingham City there, but let's not forget this is the first triumph for Gerard Houllier in his regime at Anfield. Uh, of course, uh, Roy Evans in charge uh, in 1995 when the same competition was won against Bolton Wanderers. But for Gerard Houllier, this is a, a key moment in his career and in his love affair with the football club he supported when he worked in the city. Well, certainly, and, uh, you know, Gerard is, is put together an excellent squad, uh, one that is capable of winning things, but uh, how many times have we talked about different squads, that different teams are capable of winning things and actually don't? Um, you know, once Manchester United had to wait a long, long time to win their first trophy, when they did, they went on and won things and just continued to win things. Winning the first trophy is always important, and Gerard Hulier has now got his team to win that, and that will give them tremendous confidence to go on now and possibly win even more. Yeah, they have a big date coming up against Porto in the uh, UEFA Cup. And they're still in the FA Cup, of course. But now the uh, scene will switch and those Liverpool supporters can roar their hearts out as Sven Joran Eriksson is making his way to the middle of the pitch. He will be making the presentation of the trophy. Now, I know you said, right, there was a little whisper around uh, Merseyside that Robbie Fowler might actually allow Jamie Redknapp to go up and collect the trophy. Well, certainly that was the whisper. Now, whether uh, whether Robbie Fowler is going to allow, allow that to happen after such an emotional day, I do not know. But certainly there was a whisper about that because, obviously, Robbie's had his uh, problems with injuries, similar to Jamie. Robbie's back now fit and playing, but I know they're great friends. And, uh, of course, those two are the only two players that are remaining from the last time they actually won a trophy. Indeed, in 1995, Redknapp not fit today, so Fowler the only survivor 
from that win a mere six years ago. And it means that Liverpool have now won three consecutive finals against uh, lower division sides. Sunderland in the FA Cup, Bolton Wanderers and now Birmingham in the League Cup. And uh, Michael Johnson having to be held to his feet there, but he's uh, regaining his composure and I'm sure he'll go away and know that at least Birmingham gave it their best shot. They really did. But they just got behind on the penalties, missed the first one They're through Martin Granger, got back of course with Deep Mahamans miss, uh, Ian Bennett's save, predicted brilliantly by Ray Clemens I have to say and then Jamie Carragher thumped the last one in, Vesterveld took the headlines uh, with his save from Andy Johnson but let's not forget Jamie Carragher absolutely smashed his penalty in Oh it was a great penalty, it really was and particularly because as I say, the last 5 or 10 minutes of extra time he was absolutely exhausted he was struggling to put one foot in front of the other The red ribbons uh, on the trophy but Martin O'Connor leads Birmingham forward for a rapturous ovation. Karen Brady, the managing director of the club, uh, applauding there. There's Mark Hunter, the marketing director for Brass Breweries. In the centre, Sven Joran Eriksson presenting the medals to the losers. And on the left here, David Dent, secretary of the Football League. Well, I'm sure the new national coach of the English team has thoroughly enjoyed his first final in this country. If he's enjoyed it as much as Ray Clements and myself, he certainly will take away some happy memories from Cardiff today. Now the bowler going through, Lazaridis. And O'Connor, how gritty was his performance? Well, it was incredible. He had no right to actually be on there at extra time. And he, and he didn't do an awful lot, but just his presence being there motivated the rest of the team to keep going, keep pushing forward. And you can understand, having seen his performance in extra time, why he's called Mr Motivator. And here they come, the champions, and it is Robbie Fowler. He scored their goal, he scored a cheeky-as-you-like penalty. David Burns, chief executive of the Football League there too. Liverpool appearing in a record eighth final and winning the Worthington Cup for a record sixth time. They move ahead of Aston Villa in that particular league table. And what a proud moment in the career of Robbie Fowler. He's not had the happiest of times at Anfield in the last 12 months or so, but all that will be forgotten when he receives this glittering piece of silverware. And the Worthington Cup in the year 2001 goes to Liverpool Football Club. And Robbie Fowler, whose name is so synonymous with this trophy, with his 27th goal in the competition. Sander Vesterveld, his critical penalty save there, has enabled us to show you these shots around the world. Sammy Hoopier, they're lifting their first trophy as Liverpool players. Well, that will mean so much to them all, because, as I mentioned before, they've been so desperate to win something now for, you know, well, three or four years, and they're starting to build something, and this is the start of, hopefully, Liverpool's resurgence as one of the top clubs in the country. And they do have a magnificent assembly of stars. We were talking earlier about the likes of uh, Yari Lippmann and not playing today, Danny Murphy not playing, Patrick Berger was one that we even forgot to mention, of course. So it's a fearsome squad and maybe one to challenge Manchester United's supremacy in the Premier League, which I'm sure will warm the cockles of your heart, Ray Clemens. A final comment? Well, all I could say is it's been marvellous to be here. I really have enjoyed the afternoon. It's been a, a marvellous advert for football. I feel desperately sorry for Birmingham. They've given it everything. But Liverpool just about deserved to win it. And uh, having played for the club for so many years, I'm pleased to see some silverware back in their hands again. The Millennium Stadium is the setting for Gerard Houllier's first triumph as the manager of Liverpool Football Club and the Millennium Stadium itself has arrived as a major footballing venue here in the English game. So uh, wherever you've watched around the world, I hope you've enjoyed this Worthington Cup final with us here in Cardiff. And it is Liverpool's players who are celebrating as Birmingham's trudge away to the misery of their dressing room, but they played a noble part in a memorable occasion. We leave you for the last time from Cardiff with the final result here, which was 
Birmingham City won, Liverpool won, and Liverpool won the Worthington Cup final, 5-4 on penalties. They are the new holders of the Worthington Cup and go through to next season's UEFA Cup competition. Goodbye from myself, John Held, and from Ray Clements from the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff.